Welcome to episode 14 of Talking Music. Today, we have with us Anam Rayhish. He's the voice of Svengali. He is a pro streamer on Twitch and other platforms. <laughs> uh, and he's mainly a streamer under the Unmuted show. We're going to talk a lot about that. We're going to talk a lot about Twitch. And, but definitely a lot about metal music. We'll be talking about the future of the music. Yeah, there's a lot of things are changing quite fast uh, and everything is different with the digital world and with streaming stuff. We're going to talk about promoting artists, something I try to do, something our guest tries to do in his own way also. We're going to be talking on, about more in detail about Twitch as a platform. Who is it for? Who's there on Twitch? And finally, I'm going to be talking about daring to invite a competitor to be my How guest. Dare you, <laughs> Adnan? Welcome to the our show. So it's your sentence. I'm not gonna steal it. <laughs> How are you doing? I don't think I don't think I coined "Welcome to the Show." By the way, I think that's just. I'm pretty sure I stole it from someone. Um, <laughs> uh, what's going on, man? Thank you for having me. And uh, everybody in the chat, what's going on, you guys? What's going on? I'm glad to have you. I'm glad to have you. Uh, we planned to have this uh, some some time ago. Uh, we had to kind of shift the times, uh, but we finally got the perfect time to do it. And from my perspective, it's even more perfect because I already saw you on different interviews. I already know the big part of the story. And I've already had the chance to talk of some people that knows you. I got to know a bit what you do. I've been following your Twitch show for I think five months now. So I'm very familiar with what I'm going to be talking about. <laughs> You've heard you've heard all the shit. <laughs> Basically, if you've been there for five months, yep. you know everything. About, I don't I don't really hide a lot of things, you guys. Did you guys did you guys did you guys know that? <laughs> yeah, well, I don't really hide a lot of things. The only thing that I'm still a noob on is being the the Twitch streamer. I'm still a very very noob in that, and we're here to talk about that Twitch streaming and how it goes and learning a bit of how it goes, but also talking about who's the audience and the whole story around it but but i will not go into the band's detail i would just mention that you and you would, i already did you are part of zvengali you have uh, different albums released and uh, i've had a guest from the band jm before uh fjm in the chat you guys yep uh, <laughs> who plays guitar and uh he had his share of fjm when he was with us live now we can add a bit to that we talked about the music, uh, we listened to some of the music, we were just opened with another track by Svengali, that was Fright Train. We will mention, we'll go back to Sving. and I did mention enough Unmuted show, and we are about to dive into Unmuted, but I have a warning, just a warning, before we go, I need uh -oh. you to listen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <clears throat> okay. So, I see. Uh, I'm no longer the captain. Exactly. I've hijacked. <laughs> I've hijacked what you do, and I'm in all charge. Right. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm all for it. But but you, you still get the chance to ask your questions. You get you get the chance to wonder about things, and and I'm I'm here ready ready to have a conversation. It's not gonna be a, a one guy just sitting there asking and listening. I'd like to have a conversation, discuss things, discuss opinions. I know. We do meet on different things where we agree. And I yeah. know that there are things where we do not agree. So yep. we will get into both of those. We will get into all of that. I'm Roxanne, what's going on? Oh, hey. I see. I see a lot of people joining in. Some people I know. New names this time. Which names are a bit different? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. I see a couple of a couple of other names as well. I just want to say that everyone that's uh, that's in the tribe and and uses different names and stuff. I see you guys. I see you. I'm just not shouting out everyone's handle. So no, everyone. I'm not doxing you guys right away. So um, <laughs> uh, you're lucky. There will be no more wheel of death or wheel of fire. yes. So we'll be safe. We'll be safe for the next two hours. So. <laughs> Let's let's talk about what is that? Like, what are we talking about? These Twitcher guys, they have their own language, vocabulary. But yeah. I, I know a lot of people on Facebook are maybe still holding to Facebook. And if they hear about Twitch, it's like, oh, the gamers, 
yeah, streaming a game, there's a guy gaming. What do I have to do? On or there was that trendy we mentioned uh, we mentioned at some point and we all know that i don't know some people on twitch they really don't share much of their content they don't share something that's interesting for all and we think that oh what does a metal head has have to do with a twitch like there's a game with some metal tracks in it i'm gonna go on twitch to watch a guy play a game to listen to the soundtrack of the game what we want to talk about today is what twitch is becoming more and more not just recently, it's been like that for some, uh, some time, maybe two or three years. Uh, but the Facebookers haven't catched up yet. I am one included. Yeah. I, I got <laughs> into Twitch a bit too late. I would admit that. And so tell us a bit for you. How did you discover Twitch as what it is? Because you were on Facebook, just like yeah. we are now, the old platform. And the I'm old stomping ground. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. The, the, the geezers platform. That's what I'd like to call it. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you discover twitch and like figure out that twitch is not just gaming and get into it as a platform just tell us a bit of that it just happened because someone told me um it was it was that easy it was basically uh i was doing the show on on facebook it was it was nothing like it is now obviously but uh but i was streaming on facebook asking people questions and then um i had uh, i had an interview with uh, a couple of interviews lined up with a couple of different friends. And uh, I asked them like, yo, where, do you want to be on the show? Uh, I, I do it on Facebook. And um, the very, my very first person that said, what, why the fuck are you on Facebook was, uh, was a friend of mine. We would go back 20 years yeah. and uh, he's, a, he's a full-time Twitch streamer now. His name is Fuzzy Bond uh, on, on Twitch. <clears throat> and he's like, yo man, I've, I've been streaming on Twitch for, uh, for for a long ass time like why why aren't you uh, why aren't you streaming on twitch and then i was like okay that's interesting maybe i'll look into it and then i asked uh, mike malian from uh, the drummer from monuments uh to be on the show and he's like actually i was uh, i was wondering if you wanted to do a co-stream because i do it on twitch and i was like actually our show is on i was on facebook and he's like what the why so I just made a Facebook, uh, I made a Twitch account to try and like just figure out what the hell Twitch is. Because I, I, exactly what you said, if you told me Twitch six months ago, or I think it's been fucking, it's like 10 months ago now, uh, I would have been like, um, that's, that's for gamers. That's where, uh, that's where Prodigal and, uh, <laughs> and Ricky and everybody uh, hang out. But um, I, I didn't know there was music at all. I didn't know anything that was there. And then I, I started following a couple of music streamers. I found out that, you know, Mark Hunter is there from, from Chimera. I found Daniel DK. I started following them and I was like, this is very interactive. It's a lot more interactive. Um, and it's not a social network. It's a service. It's a platform. So you go there just to stream, chat, and when, you're, when it's over, it's over. You know what I mean? Like it, yeah. it, was, it was much more to the point than, than Facebook was for me at that time. And um, I coupled it with the Discord and building the community the way we wanted it because also Facebook has that, like, you know, it's your real name, your fucking second cousin is on there, you can't yeah, share yeah, all, shit. All like, the other side <laughs> of your life, right? That you, yeah. Exactly. It's all that other stuff. Um, <clears throat> I, actually, yeah, it's true. Uh, the very first Twitch stream I ever did uh, fully on Twitch was uh, Matsum Kabani uh, from uh, from Metal East Records, and I remember telling him, "Yo, we're gonna do our episode on Twitch," yeah. and he went, "Why, dude? No, no one, <laughs> no, no one's gonna see us. <laughs> no one." <has> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, but yeah, it was it was a I experimented on his uh, episode. We sat here in this room and drank. Yeah. and uh, did the did the episode and i i loved it i just i fell in love with the idea of, of twitch and started obsessing and figuring out how to do all these crazy interactive things so if, if you want to try to compare of you already mentioned that facebook appears to be like all the other things and all the social media and big cousins but twitch is a kind of an event place where you go live for an event and you go offline you're gone nothing else no additional posts, maybe clips, and that's it, yeah. right? Yeah. And whoever joins you as a friend is not a friend, is a follower, right? That's a platform where you have a follower. And uh, you schedule. They can check your schedule. When is this guy going live? You put a theme, a title of the event. What's happening on that live? What's it about? We do that on Facebook, but we have all the other stuff around it. 
yeah uh so yeah. it's it's kind of defined goal defined function you know what you're doing that is an advantage for sure that is an advantage i mean it, it helps because because that like i said it's yeah we're, when you're when we're building the community and and uh doing shows for entertainment and and like sharing purposes and interviews and stuff like that especially because it's a live platform i think mm -hmm. a platform that strictly does live um was the best way to go because it has different integrations that other other like facebook and youtube don't have like the the idea of emotes for example or badges or all these yeah. cool little things that that you get with a community-based um platform that I, I think that's it i think that's that's the main uh, switch that changed for me so so what we're talking here there are people commenting on what we're saying and i'll have to check the comments and on the same time and now every now and then i can pick a comment and talk about it and then skip and all that but in the case of twitch you can have like something jumping on the screen some noise some explosions yeah. some screaming or whatever uh we get this uh dicks quite often whenever you have some guests some specific uh followers right they like to share those loud things they like to share their dicks yes absolutely. <laughs> uh so so in that part of in that part of the the interaction the guest is not just someone sitting and watching and listening he's also someone contributing to the experience and, yeah. and saying i'm here and here's my opinion on it and uh now, on Facebook, we do it like a bit more by our own choice, by just reading the comment and interacting with it. But on Twitch, is a bit more an active thing. It's always on, yeah. right? It's always going. Uh, in my perspective, <coughs> and we did talk maybe about this, is that if we're having a conversation and we're diving deep into something, if we get dicks in the middle of uh, talking about somebody's death, maybe it's not the right time for it. Right. No, but I we 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 compartmentalize, right? Like I have yeah. three different events, um, three different shows. Yeah. So Mondays we do a theme stream, Wednesdays we do a podcast, and Saturdays we do either a scream stream or or a combination of games or just the link dump or whatever. And um, I all those things get turned off for the podcast. The podcast has its own kind of set of uh, things that are activated, ask a question, or you can redeem uh, claps or something like that. Yeah. Um, Mondays, uh, theme streams, you have skips. You have So I <clears throat> kind of built it in a way where each show has its own set of set of things that you, you, you can do and you can turn off and, and all that stuff. Um, but it's at the very end of the day, uh, it might just be funny to click a button and have the streamer react to a scream or or someone say dicks or whatever it is or light a fire or anything but at the end of the day it's these guys financially uh supporting me because because uh, bits are are at the end of the day money yeah, and um yeah. no matter how little or how uh, quick or or any of that stuff it's uh, it pulls in and it, uh, it allows us to physically do the show at the end of the day so it's it's this back and forth i, I think that's the whole thing about it is it is a fun show. It is very, very interactive. And th the interactivity is what's keeping it alive. Because if, if that wasn't the case, I, I, would, I would not be able to do the show. I see. I, I would agree on that. So, so um, there is a different strategy. A mechanism. And how it works. And for you, there's an incentive to go there. Because you have that closer interaction with your guests. With people uh, your viewers let's call them uh what would you call them twitchers if they're watching you what would you call them i just say the tribe man it's the fucking tribe they're, they're, they're the tribe. maniacs yeah. that the maniacs <laughs> that show up every stream okay so when you have those you're close to them they can interact with you if they like what you present they can financially support you by just buying interactive things during the live you know you can, they can even send you direct donations right yeah and absolutely. they can even support you on patreon if you have a patreon they can whatever you can find different mechanisms but eventually yeah. that could support you financially to extend on this project and you know you know improve what you do build up get the the hardware you need before we, <laughs> absolutely. Get, before we get into the hardware because i have a, a quite a discussion there there's the comment from uh the admin of lab metal like my uh uh, the the other half of lab metal so in lab metal there's me the guy you see the face uh, and there's patrick patrick is the guy behind the scenes uh, running things he's the admin though don't don't upset the admin team. uh and what he up, says patrick 
Hey Patrick, thank you for uh, monitoring and running things smoothly. He wrote uh, that we uh, at the moment have about 3,000 followers on Facebook. So we have our, let's say, the, you know, the platform. We have a connection to 3,000 people, and but we do know that Facebook is not going to to the 3,000. If you post something, it's not going to the 3,000, no matter yeah. what you do. But we still have people that we can reach. We have the reach. And if we post now an event, at least it will reach 500, 400, at least. And, but if we jump today, okay, we decide if we decide today to jump to Twitch, that metal is going on Twitch for the next event, for the next interview. We will have, uh, at the moment, I'm starting something, I'm earning there, and I have eight people. So I am losing those 400, and I'll have to try to drag them in, or I'll have to build another 3,000 or 400 at least for me on Twitch to at least balance the numbers so I can have yeah. a reach for those 400. So how mm -hmm. do you manage to transition to the Twitch as a platform and build up the audience? I did the same. I had 6,000 on my Facebook page. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and we, when we first moved to Twitch, uh, there's a couple of people in the chat that, are, uh, uh, that, are, that were around when we first started on Twitch. There were th three viewers. The very first uh, highlight video that we did had six viewers. We, uh, yeah. we played games and I did the, the podcast there and stuff. And we built it. We built it basically from scratch. It was... Uh, we can make a poll exactly. Um, <laughs> uh, we uh, we just uh, we just built it from scratch, and the people that were f like dedicated enough and and wanted to to support the show the way it was. I know a lot of people that were on Facebook that made Twitch accounts specifically for Unmuted, like mm -hmm. they've never had a Twitch account before, and they made it just to c continue watching the show. And from there, with a raid here and a, and a shout out here, they started following other people. And now Twitch is, you know, part of their, their apps yeah. that they use, frequent and part of, part of their daily life. So it's, um, I think it's just whether, what the goal is at the end of the day. My goal was to uh, have the community vibe and have something that was as interactive as possible. Uh, Facebook doesn't have, you know, a mosh command. <laughs> You can't do that physically. Um, so, so I wanted I wanted to do all these silly things, and Twitch allows uh, heavy silliness. Let's just. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I I remember in my case I was uh, I had an interview with uh, Bass and Divis back on, and when we were discussing this thing, he said, "Why don't you go on Twitch?" And he mentioned Twitch to me, and I discovered the world of Twitch through through his suggestion. And he said, I'm on the, uh, this unmuted, the tribe, join the tribe. And he shared the link or something. He was going mm -hmm. live. And I went there, like, watched the stuff. And, you know, got in a bit shy, like, who's here? Who's there? What's happening? Uh, and I, I, I figured out that, oh, there's a community on Twitch. There's a lot of metal stuff happening. A lot of metal interviews. Uh, you know, metal nights, watching a movie, uh, listening to metal music, suggesting stuff. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. A lot of sharing, a lot of things you can do. And I've been part of it since I got into it, and I'm trying to drag some people with me. Uh, and, and this is part of what we're doing today in this live, is try to explain what the world of Twitch and how is it related to metal. Okay? That's my main goal today. And, but at the same time, I want to talk about how do you do what you do as someone who is hosting on Twitch. And, stuff. and I'll move a bit... I'll come back to some of the subjects, but I want to move a bit into the hardware because I know you were running things uh the Mac. Nobody God damn it, you had to bring up the Mac, okay. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. I was I was I was gear, gearing up to be like, you guys, you have a nice camera, but you know you had to fucking mention the Mac. Yeah. All right. But yes, I run <laughs> I run things on a Mac. <laughs> The reason I mentioned that, I want you to tell me, like, what's the hardware you started with? What do you need to start streaming on Twitch? And how do you build up to, to better, to improve your, the quality of what you present? Um, I started, well, the, the, the start was on Facebook, because streaming is streaming. I still use the same uh, software to stream on OBS. But um, it started with, uh, with the computer and a lapel microphone, that, one of those, like, clip-on microphones that you attach to your phone. Um, and earbuds, and then I borrowed my friend's uh, uh, SM7B. You know that microphone that every podcaster has. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, and then I just started like evolving. Then we got some lights, 
and uh, and then this microphone and another screen so i'm looking at you on a screen that's vertical now for chat and then i have another screen here for for the obs and stuff so it's it was very gradual and then <coughs> excuse me the um i got a gamer chair a gamer chair now i'm professional uh so <laughs> but uh but yeah it's it's all stuff that's been been accumulating over over a period of time and with things like the fucking tribe it's uh, it's become more and more feasible because like for the chair for example yeah and uh and even the camera mount and stuff um we put up a goal we put up a donation goal you know help me pimp out the the dungeon we call this place the dungeon mm -hmm. and um the tribe contributed and i was able to buy these things and get cool shit like that blue wall and and all that stuff so it's um it's all community based I, it's all community funded you want me to sound better and uh they're like stop muting yourself so they're like no, listen i'll donate you piece of shit stop doing that so uh one thing that's also important is to have the space right you need that room you need to set up your own area where you can isolate get uh, you know the proper audio background clean and you always need some sort of a background right some sort of yeah. space and that's the cave right your cave is the space oh the yeah. dungeon okay the dungeon the dungeon the cave so sounds too nice the dungeon sounds like it need some chains exactly and, a, yeah. and an iron maiden i know how much you like the band but it's okay. right off camera it's right out it's right off camera <laughs> okay um i wanted to get into uh one more thing like you mentioned that the community that you have a community and they they enjoy what you do and they go on this uh fund me campaign and build you know um, gather a certain amount and get you the chair help you get the chair or the mic or the stand or whatever and uh i mentioned the mac because i wanted you i wanted to ask you about like uh there's an upgrade coming and yeah these fucking guys like, i swear to god how did that happen what's what did what happened with the upgrades I have no fucking idea. Um, so uh, we were, um, I was, it was on a Thursday, last yeah. Thursday, and, uh, and we weren't supposed to be streaming. I wasn't supposed to be doing anything on Discord or anything like that. And then uh, my wife said, you, you should, you know, go on Discord, just chat with your friends because, you know, I have some stuff to do. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll catch up later. I go on Discord. They drag me into a room. For those that don't know Discord, it's like a forum, but you can also like activate your cameras or your microphones and stuff. Yeah. And then they said, check out Lingo Two and Three stream. Lingo Two and Three is a big part of the the community, a huge part of the tribe. And um, Lingo was building a PC, just si sitting on the floor building a PC, talking. Yeah. And then uh, and then he turns around and he says, and then we uh, we got together behind your back and funded this insanely powerful beast of a fucking machine pc which oh. can like you know run the sun and uh and they they bought it and built it for me and they're sending it over as a surprise nice. and i i'm just talking about it now and i still don't know how to react it's fucking it's so so over the top so ridiculous but i mean these guys there yeah, this is why this is why i call it tribe like this is this is insane also uh it's it's their very expensive way to tell me fuck your mac <laughs> <laughs> they had to do it they had to do it <laughs> yeah it's it's their very expensive way to say uh, to say fuck that mac but um but it's amazing i see so so they, they went that far to to upgrade what you have to to give you the better you know equipments to do it better and uh that's that's a great great uh difference i would say from what facebook is there's a more cozy cozy environment and, <laughs> and i like that and you mentioned already discord being like a a sister of the twitchy right yeah. uh, discord is a sister twitchy so uh, <laughs> what is discord uh you mentioned a bit but for those who have no idea uh, and i haven't left the cave long time ago so discord for me is a relatively new uh, it's it, it's uh, it's new to me as well. It's yeah. it's basically just having like your own server. It's uh, you remember those old school forums that we were on. I see. Like where where you have different rooms that you can chat in and different subjects yeah. and, and stuff like that. It's just basically that. Um, you make your own. So and so, uh, yeah. and and 
and yeah and uh, you can you have voice and video options so you can kind of optimize it the way you want so on discord you can post things that are meant to stay and on twitch it's just the live chat always gone right kind of yeah like gone so yeah. you can you can share like a picture of the chat a picture of the stream a clip of the stream some uh, memes nine gag stuff random discussions and you have sections like a kind of a forum style with a theme right so you can discuss exactly. hardware you can discuss a uh, metal recommendation the latest concerts yep. uh you have also a movie section you can like uh, suggest movies or stream a movie and watch together these are uh, yeah. very different activities connected yeah. to to the community you build on twitch so it's like a after the show this is the backstage kind of exactly that's that's where we hang out before and after the show that's where everyone's at that's where everyone's like sharing music we listen to something on the show and mm -hmm. the, you know someone comes back and they says actually their second album was better they check this album out or someone makes a piece of music or a piece of art or yeah or fucking paints their face cool like everyone shares their their stuff there and um and like i said it's just just a community of misfits it's like a community of people that uh, from all over the world that just hang out and uh, it started because i wanted to build this kind of network for for the middle eastern scene oh. and uh, and get them talking and get them you know hanging out so so there that you tell different stories you have guests you have interviews you introduce you drag more people in to the to join the tribe and you also have some merch, you have some designs, you have some strange, crazy ideas that end up on shirts, right? Yeah, so mostly you... because of uh, uh, someone that's in the chat, Derpy. I see. She comes, up with, she comes up with all the weird ideas. So I want you to tell us about this thing. The lamp of good. <laughs> oh, that looks... Uh, thank you for, uh, for grabbing that. That looks, uh, that looks good. That looks good. The lamp of good. Yeah, that was um, <clears throat> that was a story I told on stream. Um, it, it, it happened in Jordan. Uh, the, in Jordan, when when we were playing shows, especially when it was like in public places, yeah. you, the authorities would ask us to write down the um, the name of the band and the songs that we're gonna play. And if they flagged one or two, they you have to send them all the lyrics. So. There was a bunch of bands playing a bunch of covers, and one of the bands were trying to play Lamb of God songs. But um, if you write Lamb of God on any piece of paper that the authorities were going to read, they're going to flag that shit, and they're going to be like, listen, Habibi, tell me what you're singing about. Uh, so, um, so they wrote, instead of Lamb of God, they wrote Lamp of Good. And no one asked the question. <laughs> and and it, was just, it, was just, it just happened. And uh, the, they played the show. They played all the Lamb of God songs. Yeah. and walked away and then when i said that story on on the podcast um derpy was like yo that that's so funny what about if we do a command where if you do exclamation point lamp of good in the chat yeah. the lights blink like the lights do that oh and the sound comes on okay that's like let me let me see how i can do that and then because that started becoming a thing more and more people started finding out about lamp of good and then uh, people were like, yo, let's fucking do a t-shirt design. <laughs> let's let's yeah. make a Lamp of Good band t-shirt. And uh, when I had um, Kevin Foley on the show uh, from Benighted, uh, and, uh, and he plays in everything, um, I told him that story about, about the Lamp of Good because he asked about it. And he said, uh, I, I'd, I'd like to audition for that band. I think they're even better than Lamb of God. <laughs> and I have that as a clip. So now Lamp of Good has become an official band. Yeah, I guess like the only thing missing is right to have band members and like release something. Maybe exactly, single. release a band photo somewhere. <laughs> just just a bunch of people with a lamp right next to them. Um, I'm gonna jump a bit to the comments from time to time, and uh, they somehow serve my my sequence of questions. Hell so yeah. there's a comment from Ihab. Uh, I don't know what's his Twitch uh, name. So uh, there's a comment from Ihab. Uh, he's saying that you're so innovative that you'll find a way to ruin your stream on the new pc and that connects directly to the question i wanted to ask you what does adnaning something stands for i mean listen you guys in the chat you have you have to respond to this because i can't say it for me um i i i personally don't think i i adnan anything i think adnan in something means you know giving it your all yeah um giving it 110 percent and uh and you know achieving your your goals and dreams but they seem to think that adnaning something means 
completely and utterly royally fucking it up uh with with very little um uh, very little way to return back to the way it was before <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah un unrepairable damage just yeah basically yeah. i see so um, I, I will connect to some things that go back a bit uh, back in time go back in time and i, I by searching reading online figuring out like your past and where oh, you no. were before uh, i figured out you were part of different bands different uh, other bands like now i yeah. just mentioned bengali that's what you do now your yeah bengali voice in the previous bands uh some one was called infested mind right uh yeah it was a short-lived thing uh one of the earlier uh bands i guess one of the first recorded stuff i did yeah and what about figure of fate and that was the, the first like serious band we played a couple of shows around uh, around the region um yeah also very short-lived we played I, I don't know if we played dubai yeah there we are that was jordan mm. jordanian mainly at the time yeah yeah that was all jordan okay and uh you jumped a bit right in the beginning so you were in that band then a bit in that band and the other but you had the name head can you explain yeah. what that was that about? I was <clears throat> it's just listen, it's a, it's an old. So did somebody old give name. you that name? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was um, it was two did things. They, uh, I used to yeah. I I back when I lived in Qatar, I used to wear beanies a lot. Ah, okay. Um, and it was really really stupid because I was in Qatar, but I was like this metal kid with black nails wearing beanies when I was like thirteen. You know, just like with a trench coat look, and I was also obsessed with corn. Uh, and specifically the guitarist head, uh, Brian head Welsh. Uh -huh. So, uh, they said, uh, they said, you know, the guy with the big head because camps don't fit me. He wears a beanie and, uh, and also he's obsessed with head. So it just, it just kind of happened where everyone called me head. But, um, we, in, as soon as I moved countries, I started to dissolve that nickname. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you really wanted the distance from the past. I see. Yeah. Um, you were playing bass, right? Uh, I was playing bass for a figure of fate and uh and uh I was doing bass and drums for Infested Mind. And at the same time you were um in parallel to all of that a band activity, you were having experience with editing, right? And thing audio mix everything was kind of a visual pro production, right? Yeah, yeah. Basically and that's what I that's what I like did in the, in the professional like what i went to school for what i went to college for all that stuff i see so we, we have a, another comment that uh i'm gonna use again for for uh you know to to progress with uh again from ihab uh he said he really wants to know the story of how you met me i'm gonna talk about it <laughs> <laughs> and silver chair but uh, i do wanna i do wanna play a part of a video that i, I think you edited and filmed I'm not sure the okay. detail you'll tell us. We'll watch a bit of it and uh, we'll talk a bit about what is that and what were you doing, okay? Cool. Let's go. This one goes to Mustafa Ben Flash, Texas Chicken Mail. This is what happens to you when uh, you stay awake. For the first time in Nerves of History, we have not been overweight. That is a fact. 10th of August 2011, we've been traveling, doing international shows for about since 2007, so it'll be about four years now. Never have we succeeded in getting without paying the excess luggage, so 
Yeah, I think Adnan brings us good luck. We're going to Qatar. We just take our flight to Munich, meet Brahmi. Excited, man. It's been a year and a half since we got to Europe, so. Shit's going down. Psychogenocide. Bring it on. We were the last two to get in this plane. <laughs> and that's why we're stopping this. Look at the book. Look at the price. I told you about the book, yeah. You heard about the book. Do you know about this book? Some government. Uh, what's this? Illuminati something. It's good. Storm one, pal. Storm. So that's just the beginning. It's a, it's, a, it's a long kind of thing, but yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I heard something quite nice. They were saying that Adnan brings them good luck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That was uh, that was a fun trip. Um, I uh, I went to Europe with uh, with Nerf Song, Dubai-based mm -hmm. death metal band, and uh, and we uh, I was basically like their their camera editing, photo tech. Yeah. A little bit of everything guy and uh and yeah it was it was a lot of fun that was one of the very first things i did in terms of like documentary style filming and uh it's rough looking back at it. it's been fucking 10 years looking back at it, i was like god damn it why was i filming like an idiot but uh, it was it was a good learning curve it was a lot of fun but, but you were following a metal band on their tour and recording the future and commenting in your own way uh i find it very very quite an early start into the and yeah. you were kind of representing what the band is doing right you're documenting you're you're putting them on the digital world with the very accessible content just a video very easy click and watch and yeah. you have other videos uh, in dubai for this uh, metallica band metallica. so they're uh, they're this uh, it's a small thrash area um, ah. th bay, bay area thrash band there i they have a lot of potential uh okay I, I think yeah so so you met that band we'll, we'll move on we'll move on yeah yeah we, we bumped into them maybe once or twice okay um i have i have i'm not gonna stick much there but i wanted to sh say that you were building up a knowledge and experience of how to bring to the band a band to an audience represent them you know track their steps talk to the band uh feature what they do so this is like quite early quite early like 10 years ago actually even before this man i used to do um yeah. back in 2007 i had a thing called uh called camel head podcast which is another stupid name but uh we had we had a podcast called camel head podcast in 2007 before i even yeah. knew what a fucking podcast meant um where we interviewed jordanian bands uh i had a tape swap initiative called sick and raw records where I'd email bands from around the world, tell them, listen, if you send us your, you know, MP3s and I send you my MP3s and we just promise each other on like good faith yeah. that you will burn CDs and send them out to your friends and I'll burn CDs here and send them out to my friends just to spread the word. Would you do that? And, uh, and we did that with, mostly with the Dubai uh, scene from, from Jordan and stuff. But... Nice. Um, yeah, we were just, you know, trying to trying to spread. So I've, I've been like, if I'm not on stage, I'm doing something for the people on stage. Um, if, uh, yeah, I just, I, I, I like metal. I like the community. Nice. There are subjects that I am avoiding to dive into yet. I, we will go back to some of these things, but I'm going to move. Cool. I'm going to move to listen briefly. The track I know a lot of people like, and I know, and we'll talk about that more. That you're reviewing some stuff on youtube and and we'll talk about like reviewing reaction videos and all that but i want cool. i want to get your kind of reaction on this video um let's see <laughs> so what, what do you think of uh, this band <clears throat> is this um is this nickelback what is this Talika, they're, they're uh, latest <laughs> so god I, this, this meme is following me everywhere <laughs> <laughs> so the reason this I'm is sharing, going everywhere everywhere uh creed is not a bad band right it's they're they're good they make some good music but they just they, they became i don't know somehow a joke somehow for us but it, it started with one person it started with one person in the tribe called lars lars uh -huh. came into the tribe and found it hilarious to request creed songs on metal nights 
I see. And then and then it started growing. And then other people started requesting Creed songs. And then Creed started becoming a meme and like just exploding. And then um, not too long ago, I made I made the word Creed banned in the chat. So if you say Creed, the bot automatically times you out for five seconds. And uh, and it's just it's just fucking hilarious. I find it funny as hell. <laughs> it's just one of those weird internet humor things. I see that that's that's actually a nice uh, feature that you can block certain word that you just n- never want to see. Exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> stupid, but it's so much fun. I'm gonna try to play another video, uh, but this time we're gonna go through the content of that video. And this is a video that you recently uploaded to YouTube. Uh, something you do with uh, with your, I guess, um, big member of the tribe and another Twitch, Alien Gorilla, yeah. and uh, you're calling those videos. Uh, we'll talk about what you're calling them because the calling of them is a bit complicated. We'll get yeah, to that. Little, it's a little. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I know, I know. So I'm gonna try to play that one. Uh, I need a bit of second to adjust the video for it to work. And what cool. I want no you to do now is you're gonna do this as a force wall breaking thing. So you're gonna react to you reacting to the video. Okay, and tell okay, us cool. how is your reaction? <laughs> Let's, uh, let rocking, me just, uh, uh, just uh, fix that. Uh, I, can. I just want to say, uh, uh, Natalie, thank you so much. She, uh, she says, I just subscribed to your channel. Looking forward to seeing your content and meeting your tribe. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Thank you for, for doing that. What an absolute badass. One thing I should mention before we proceed is you can uh, leave a questions for Adnan and we'll, we'll, we'll pause for five minutes to ten minutes and, and go through the questions. So if Hell you have yeah. some, some interesting questions for Adnan, please post them in the comments. We will get to them. Uh, and if there's something really, really urgent, or really, really onto the subject we're talking, Patrick will pin it. So I'll see, like, this is something we should talk about at the moment. Okay, so I'm going to disappear and replace my face with this. Not, <laughs> not me. <laughs> I love that frame so much. <laughs> But this is uh, this is uh, the the video, so I'm gonna start from there. Uh, we're gonna watch it and uh, comment about people commenting. But uh, we're just gonna get an idea, like how do you do a reaction video, and uh, then after the video, talk a bit the work behind it and the concept, and why is this a thing becoming a, a very huge thing in the metal scene, and specifically, but also in, in any other genre, also. So let's All let's right. go through it. Morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another one of these uh, reaction videos where we react to things that make noise and go wah wah. We're here today with the uh, Dawn of Solace, their new song White Noise. I haven't uh, checked these guys out before. I'm very curious. I like the uh, the title because I have a child and my Spotify playlist is uh, is just a playlist of white noise to get him to fall the fuck to sleep. Jiving into it. I have a double at nine. No will do. <laughs> I'm just looking at all the editing mistakes that I did. <laughs> I'm like, fuck that. That music shouldn't be still playing. Judgment, right? <laughs> okay. Never perfect. Very melodic, by the way. So audio. In case you uh, <laughs> didn't know, you set two you cameras and you go that. online They're and really you kind of stream this together and record I'm, I'm it at excited. the same, right? Because, exactly. Uh, we uh, we just do it on uh, on a Zoom or or Discord, and we just. Just like you know how we watched the movie together the other day, and yeah. um, and just watch something together. We record it and then uh, edit it right after. And how do you choose a track? It's either something either of us are excited about. Um, that that like yo, I want to check this out and I want to I want to you know have you with me and react to it and and put it up, or yeah. uh, or something that like we're curious about like this one i didn't know anything about the band he did mm-hmm. and uh, and he wanted me to check it out oh that's a, a swedish i think band dawn of solace we'll definitely yeah. share li- the link already in the comments for, for these um so you you decide on a re- fresh release right a recently yeah, yeah. posted official video by the band and sometimes you have no idea what the band is what they do just like, like you just mentioned uh, sometimes Julian knows about it, so he will uh, encourage you, like, this, this band is good, let's check it out. And you listen, you comment, uh, sometimes it's not exactly to your taste, which, this is the example of that. You mentioned later on, 
that this doesn't sit exactly in your i don't know the stuff you usually go for right yeah 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 and so how, how do you usually like uh, build the opinion on it you have you, you're you're live reacting live so you just had the first listen and you are a guy who edits so you get distracted a bit with edits sometimes right well in this one we're we're not editing as we are we're not uh touching the the stream decks we're not doing yeah. anything we're just a hundred percent yeah nice. just just watching it and the only part of the video that's actually edited or cut yeah. up is the intro and the outro but like the music part uh, -huh. uh is not edited at all okay so so uh, if you want to make a short video of what we're doing now this will be the the guy uh, who invited the musician who was talking to the manager who is reviewing the track <laughs> The musician is talking to the manager about the manager's opinion of the video. The videos on YouTube. That's basically the title. That's the title. That's a viral video. There you go. <laughs> so obviously, I guess you you are producing you're producing those videos, posting them, and I see there they they catch the attention. They get viewers. They get comments. They get like different opinions. Like they listen to your reaction. And they go to the you know to the comment section no man you're wrong that's not it or whatever right yeah so this opens a discussion and opens a bit of a discussion uh deep discussion on the visual like oh mm -hmm. why did they film his ring and close up to his hand yes. or oh i see that the blood in the lake um so it kind of uh brings the attention of someone to the details in a video i, I kind of like that so if i wanted to guess what kind of an interesting thing is with the reactions is a bit it brings your attention to some details from a perspective yeah, uh, of another person yeah because you're not just passing by anymore it's not just a song that someone played you while you're you know yeah. texting or uh, you have to sit there and, and fully focus on a song and that's partly why we started it because we realized you know uh, uh, in 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 a world where we're literally listening to music basically 24 7 either on stream or off stream or talking about music a lot of the time these these uh, songs just pass us by really quickly mm -hmm. um and uh, we wanted to just sit there and be like hey man let's actually sit down and listen to whatever the new spirit box album and initially we had an idea to do it like we were doing the movie nights where we just you know make a discord room uh, make sure that everyone's mics are muted and we just play the music and everyone sits there and listens to the music uh comments on it in in chat if they want to uh but no no disruptions kind of thing and then um julie and i just thought maybe if we did live reactions that'll that'll be interesting it does a couple of different things we pay attention to the song we bring the song to light to the tribe mm -hmm. but also it uh it opens up the door for for other opinions and the uh, best case scenario is we highlight a band that people might not have known before like the, the very first one is uh we did for for Wetad, uh, a dubai-based arabic speaking metal band we got a ton of messages after saying we, uh, they had no idea the band even existed. And um, that's the primary goal. Mm -hmm. We do, you know, the hypocrisies and the dawn of solace and stuff in the middle. But my primary goal is to do underground Middle Eastern bands and, uh, and build up that, uh, that attention. So that if we do, you know, uh, if we do do, <laughs> if we do do a Coat of Arms song or a Black EM's next album or, or something like that, uh, we already have the the foundation where people could be like, let's check out what these guys have to say, because you know they did whatever hypocrisy or something, and then hopefully, you know, teach some new people about some some new bands. I see. Yeah, I I would definitely uh, enjoy that because I am I am learning about some new bands through this, and so far many of them I haven't heard before. Um, but when you're listening to this, when you're doing this, uh, is there a specific uh, thing that you want to discuss in those videos, a specific element that you choose to target, focus on, or whatever comes to mind when you're listening is what you talk. No, it's unfiltered. It's usually just okay. like whatever comes, and that's why it's sometimes stupid. Like, you know, I think I forgot which uh, video it was, like maybe a Cradle of Filth or something. They were, the, there was a guitar solo, and I was like, I want to see the guitarist in this video why are you showing me like the you know the storyline yeah. and that's a it's a fucking music video if you want to see it live it, you go to the live video but that was the first thought that came into my head and you know that's that's what's out there and some people commented in the in the chat like actually i agree and other people were like i don't agree 
how much time does it take you to prepare for it and then sh- then shoot it and then edit it get it online like the whole sequence here. it'll take maybe three hours total three hours three for, four hours for that eight yeah. minutes right yeah to, okay. to sit down to get the screen set up to get everything uh recorded uh to sync everything and then uh and then edit it and make sure that it's edited and uploaded within you know the day yeah it uh, takes a few hours yeah and, and how often do you plan like to get those kind of videos up? we did a lot back to back because we're also learning i'm the kind of guy that like if i'm starting something i started i do it every day until i know everything about it and then i'll start slowing down and figuring out a plan so we did i think we did like six already in a week or something or in, in two weeks and um yeah so now now we might structure it a little better that we have a an, an understanding maybe we do it like sundays sunday nights we do a we upload the video or something but um other than that you know, we we don't really have a plan we don't really have a, a schedule uh, for for these things yet uh so but this is gonna keep going right there will be more videos and, and i would invite ev- anyone to, to join the youtube channel on uh there's a lot of interesting videos coming i enjoy those reactions i'm getting to know a lot of bands that i didn't know about uh i'm supposed to but and some of them i didn't like but i tried i gave them the chance <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh but that's okay right like you're not supposed to love any new track right reason that's the um, whole point and th- and that's why i love these not only these reactions on youtube but even yeah. the the like link dump and skips and stuff on on twitch okay uh, that we do where someone shares a song and people give their immediate reaction in in the chat it's like not everyone's supposed to like everyone's t- style of music and uh and for some reason us metalheads have somewhat of a a stick up our asses sometimes about what we're supposed to like and is this true or not and I, I i like breaking that down i like making fun of it to some degree so uh oh shit jam's in the house god damn it jam <laughs> yeah he never agrees with you but he made that clear yeah <laughs> so unless maybe let's let's see uh Maybe you should get him as a guest. React to something. Uh, he that? will just hate everything, Jam. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is, is, okay. Yeah. So Jam, for those who don't know, is the guitar uh, player in the band Svengali. So you yes. know each other very well and you made the music. So yes. if you're making music together, I assume you have some similarity in taste, but not necessarily everything. Barely, barely. barely. He's okay. uh, he's not only the guitar player; he's the main songwriter. So he writes all the music, and I write uh, all the lyrics and stuff. And uh, he produces the albums and and records them himself. So he's the engineer as well. And um, because of that, we uh, we both have very very strong opinions about how it's supposed to sound. Uh, especially because we you know we're not handing it off to someone else. It's it's done in in his own studio. Yeah. Uh, we uh, we we don't agree, <laughs> we don't. Agree. But when we do, we're like, okay, we know that we're onto something good because both of us like this part. So it's nice, like eventually, to agree on something. Because if you don't at all agree, you won't be making them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we 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 always say Zvengali is a result of uh, JM and I arguing, but um, but we have the same end goal. I have a big ticket thing. I'll quickly. Um, mm-hmm. There is a question from Kelevra. That's what I can read. I'm sorry if I butchered the name. Um, Derpy Paws. Ah, yeah. That's uh, that's, that's our uh, community manager, producer mm-hmm. lady, Derpy Paws. He has a very interesting question. We talked a lot about how much work what you do requires, like effort, the focus, the time, the hours. And she, she's asking, like, you have a, a little lad, you have a little boy, and she's seen him interrupt your editing sessions. While, and how do you balance taking care of your kid uh, with all the work you have to do for the show? Like, everything else. Including... How do you find, you know, make that balance? <clears throat> Blocking time, 100%. Every hour is, is blocked um, in, uh, in the schedule. 
So I know exactly when I'm supposed to be with him. I know exactly when we're having lunch. I know exactly when I'm back in the dungeon uh, for, for either streaming or editing or, or doing any of that stuff. And um, I'm not the best at it, but I'm getting better. And, uh, and sometimes he, he does jump in, in calls and he does jump on streams and he does, uh, he does jump in during the edits and stuff. He pops up every once in a while, but, uh, but you so, know. So, so being it, super it just organized. Happens. Yeah. Being super organized, trying, scheduling. Trying to be organized. As much as, yeah, yeah, okay. as much as possible, right? Yeah. Having a certain schedule, trying to commit to it. But yeah. uh, if you organize as best as possible your time, you end up finding a bit more time to do more. But yeah. this is a dangerous, uh, it'd be a dangerous, you end up packing every 20, 10 minutes of your day with something to do. But you I'm like find, that. You like that? I'm like that. I, I, I don't know how to function otherwise. Um, that's why we have reaction videos now. It's like, what, <laughs> what more can we do? Still time, let's do more. Yeah, what more can we do? What, what, instead of watching you yeah. know, another episode of The Office or, or, or you know, spending the, the end of the night uh, watching some, some movie or some series, what else can I, can I do to, to contribute to the tribe, to, to make more content for everyone, to do something for the metal scene? What else can we physically do that's a positive impact to, to other people? And it's, it's kind of why we work so much. <laughs> you don't feel overwhelmed at the end. You don't feel like I need a break. Because I remember like you had two weeks break and it seemed like you really needed it. Yeah, that time I was sick and exhausted. And um, I, uh, I just, I shouldn't, be, I shouldn't be trying to do stuff when I'm like physically sick. Uh, but, uh, but that, that was, that was a very well needed, very well needed, uh, vacation. But, um, and that was the first one I took in a year from, uh, from streaming. Crackers is also commenting on parenting. You learn about parenting every day you do it. Never ends, but it's awesome. So a hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. It's, it's not like an additional task, right? Parenting is just a very different. No. Thing. It's it's an ever evolving school of fucking life lessons. It's insane. Like you learn more about yourself as a human being uh -huh. and uh, and as a as a parent as a as a person in the world uh, than I ever did about like you know kid. <laughs> you, I, it's he he's changing me more than I'm fucking teaching him at this point. So uh, I'm gonna switch to to a nearby topic, but further topic. We talked about Twitch, maybe not enough, but we talked about it. never enough. And we talked a bit about YouTube and what's happening on there. There is a, a, a newly, uh, I would say a newly released uh, platform that we're gonna talk about it. Uh, I, I would say something we plan to release. And uh, we won't, we're gonna discuss it more. So, so far, this is uh, the, the new, the new uh, <laughs> platform that uh, we've designed. <laughs> And it is a very famous, a very known uh, platform where YouTube is a relatively 10 minutes thing. Uh, Twitch is a two hours thing. What we do now on Facebook is the monstrous three to four hours thing, which yeah. we'll see if it will <laughs> remain like that. And this is the complete opposite. So if you're not stretching in time, to first talk, we go to one minute, right? Uh, so first talk is a very short, very small <laughs> platform for short videos and, and the quick stuff. And we're going to just check one of the videos that, that was uh, made and uploaded there. And then we'll talk about it. Okay? Done deal. <laughs> Happy to have you here for this very interesting interview. But I'm going to start with the most important question. I've heard you're going to the Amazons to set up a stage for a very big bag. Tell us about that. I, um... I don't even know where to start. Honestly, it's... <laughs> so, obviously, this wasn't intended to be any serious video, but it was kind of intended to be one of those kind of versions where we're trying to do an interview. We only have 20 seconds to do it, so I only have time to ask you the question. You never answered me. And I think now during this live, we have enough time. So what's, what was, the, what was the, the answer? We're going to the Amazons to set up a stage for a very big band. What's that about? Um... It's confidential. <laughs> I'll accept that answer. No, the, point, the point was, uh, TikTok is one more platform. 
Uh, and mm-hmm. I was surprised to see today that you already joined TikTok, Amy. So tell we us a bit about, about that platform and how is it used to also, you know, play, promote, talk about metal, introduce bands, do what you do, and maybe, maybe bring more people to the tribe, right? So I, I have no idea. I, I can't be the person to tell you this because we yeah. have a TikTok. We've had a TikTok for a long time. Mm-hmm. A TikTok account is an un- unmuted show. And we've posted highlights and stuff on there. But I, I have no idea what goes on in that fucking place. So how, I have no idea. You're not active on it. You're not managing the posts. That ever. No, we posted a couple of times and then, yeah. and then and we just forgot about it. <laughs> it's crazy. Zvengali has a TikTok. I don't think we have a single post on there. Okay, so you just join it and then you're on it, but you don't know what is it about. Yeah. It seems. <laughs> Basically, we we it, it, we we blocked the name basically, so no one else could take the name on that okay, platform. That's, that's a, basically it. That's a good idea. So you might you might get. Uh, I think I already know that uh, answer, but you will get to a day where you're talking to someone and say, "What? You're streaming on Twitch, dude? You have to move to TikTok." Is that 100%. a possibility? A hundred percent. I mean, already now. Yeah, um, I know there are already we, there, live there streams. Are, there, yeah, there are people that even when you tell them about Facebook, they're like, I've never had one. Yeah. Um, like they just existed in a world where they didn't need to make a Facebook. I was, I was listening to Spotify today, which is, again, another platform where there are uh, podcasts, at least, and even videos. Um, and I got an advertisement from, from podcast of a German artist, a lady, a German pop artist. And she's going to be uh, interviewing or have an interview soon on, uh, on not Twitch, sorry, TikTok. He's gone on TikTok yeah. Live for an interview. So yeah. these platforms, you know, are, are the capability to have a live stream. It will become everywhere. You'll have, you can do it on Instagram. We all know that already. You can do it on yeah. YouTube. You can do it on Facebook. You can do it on Twitch. There's always a different platform. But you have to choose which platform suits your content, which platform suits your audience, and the type of content you want to present, right? So yeah. uh, in TikTok... I, I personally don't see it at the do what we do on TikTok. I might be totally wrong. Maybe in the next five years, it'll be something else. Today, TikTok is that place for nothing really to share besides the jokes or the short stuff. Uh, but we might be wrong. The future might be in TikTok. Um, so I think I think in general, generally speaking, because I was talking to. Um, to one of the tribe members today about it, uh, Stephen Gadenzi, who does photography streams on Twitch, and he wanted to yeah. ask, um, you know, the difference between t- Twitch and YouTube. And I think everything is going to have live streaming at some point. Like within the next three years, every platform is going to have live streaming. I think every platform almost does already. Um, it just depends on what your outcome is. Like you and I, we we talk a lot we, we we sit down and we have conversations for fucking hours uh, about music with people th- yeah. from all over the world and we need a platform that kind of supports that a platform that pushes um you know long hours basically long platform something that supports obs where you can change cameras and, and do all that stuff i don't think you know an instagram live because i've seen people do interviews on instagram live with the like you know the Instagram so live and everyone's on, on their phone. You can't yeah. chat. No one's really talking. Um, yeah. Most of the time, you can't hear the audio. And if the one camera person angle, talks. like the phone could be shaking sometimes. And the everyone's got that double chin angle right there. <laughs> like yeah. there's, there's everything's going on. Yeah. Um, so I don't like that works for, for some people. Someone's, mm-hmm. you know, promoting a quick album launch or a quick single. You jump on Instagram live, you hype it up. Five minutes, you're done. But um, but for for what we do, I think you know, th- and I think that's that's the way you pick anything in terms of uh, social media. That's the way you pick anything. It's just what is the end goal? What is the purpose? What are you trying to build in the in the long run? Yeah. And um, in the format you're presenting, what what kind yeah. of show you you're making? And also, d- don't heavily invest in in any single platform. Like, don't um, put all your eggs in that one basket. Yeah. Yeah. So. I would say uh, we are trying to do that as, as, a, as our lab metal, that we are streaming on Facebook. That's what we always did and started. Uh, we did the stream already on YouTube. We tried that out. Like, hey, how does it go on YouTube? How smooth 
is and all that. We uh, reacted to the to the movie release by uh, Death Tribe. So we had uh, Anthony by Death Tribe, and we, we interacted. It was fine. We had comments, and we were you know, able to interact with the with the people. Uh, it wasn't as smooth as other platforms, uh, as far as I noticed. And when we finished the live, you know, it automatically goes to, as a posted video. So that yeah. is a sort of an advantage somehow. Uh, it's already like in the YouTube box, in the among the other YouTube videos. It's very easy to reach, and it has the date in the comment. The live comments sometimes are in their own section, and they need few days to be there and whatever. So we also keep the live comments there still. There. And Twitch, that's gone, unless you record. Yeah. You can record the screen, but you don't record the comments and discussion. The chaos. You can, yeah, you know, you can save your uh, VODs or videos yeah. on demand, um, mm -hmm. but uh, but th that's also a whole a whole different world. I just don't, I personally don't save any of the the clips. I don't save any of that yeah. for a couple of different reasons. The technical term is uh, is mostly for you know music copyrights and stuff like that. Like we're pl playing a lot of that stuff. Um, I don't want to save it and uh, and get flagged in any way, but mostly because we do a lot of stupid shit on stream. <laughs> and um, very early on, yeah. we we made a poll and asked the tribe, like, what do you want? And uh, a lot of people just said, hey, man, delete it after, because we want it to be yeah. like a, a room. We went into a party. Everyone that's in attendance gets to experience it. But what once it's gone, on it's Twitch gone. Stays on Twitch. Stays on Twitch. I see. What happens on un unmuted stays muted, ironically. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, so that's that's an advantage in that case that you have this closed space. And yeah. the people who enter that space, you know they're there. And whatever the interaction, if, if, unless somebody's, you know, recording his that interaction is supposed to be just in the moment. Then it's gone. Yeah. No, yeah, 100%. Um, but for the interviews, I see you record those and you post later yeah. the edited version. So it's very nice to go back to the watch it. And that yeah, is, again, more work, right? <laughs> it is. It is. Because then I go back and I, uh, I edit the, the audio, make sure that the audio is good. I, sometimes I put a different intro, depending if there's too much chaos in the, in the stream for an intro. Yeah. Um, you know, add the uh, click here's and all that YouTube stuff. And uh, and upload on YouTube, and then probably make clips for for Instagram. So I post Instagram stories based on the on the clips. On the clips to, to promote from, from before the... event and after event. Yes. Keep it active. Um, we talked about the short version stuff, uh, and I want to go a bit into the short version stuff. So I already mentioned TikTok is a short version thing in general. As a past, Instagram is also the same. You post the story or whatever, it's 50 seconds or maximum. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's, unless... it's a minute. Four, yeah. four slides each, basically. <laughs> so so there's, a, there's a limit time, and you want in that limited time to present you know, the gist of it, the, the best part, you know, the, that uh, crazy moment. So when you're, when you're summarizing it, the short content, to throw on TikTok, to throw on Instagram, to throw wherever, uh, you're always taking the gist of it. You're taking the core of the idea. And if you're browsing through those, you're, you're watching like, ah, that's a funny part. Then another funny part. Then, uh, you know, uh, an interesting story. It's everything in clips. I need minute. But mm -hmm. then we do those live. Now we're talking and we talk for at least two hours in general. And I, I watch your interview. The hundreds you have. They are at least an hour or an hour and a half or two. So I would say the average is near two to something like that. so yeah. when you switch to that kind of content and everybody's getting used much format and do you expect less and less people to have the patience to sit and watch you for two hours no i think it just filters the people that are hungry for the longer content and it filters out the people that don't want that content if you want the quick fix 100 percent, you can follow on instagram you get the quick fix of the same interview, five seconds, a couple of comedy bits, and a, and a you know bars and tone, just a beep at the end to make it funny. Um, but if uh, if it's something that you want, you're interested in, you'll stick around. But in terms of like worrying about people losing interest, I think it's it's the opposite. It's about finding the people that actually care about this this kind of stuff. 
So, so eventually you're making a contact for not all the audience, a specific group of that audience. And uh, those people will always follow that kind of content. As, as long as yeah. they enjoy such a format, they're going to watch it. Absolutely. It's just like you guys. You guys make, yeah. make content with a specific um, type of person in mind. Yeah. And those are the people that are gravitating towards lab metal. It doesn't, your guys aren't trying to reach, you know, the, the pop culture level of, of interviews for, for Facebook. You guys have a, have a set goal. And that's basically the same way I do it. Like the, the set goal is to, to find the people that not only give a shit about metal and underground metal and the scene and all that stuff, but also just want to, hang out with people like-minded people from around the world mm -hmm. and not argue because dude how many fucking people do we know that if you post an opinion right now right now just on your personal facebook page people will be like but i told you <laughs> it's yeah. like listen i want we want to make a community we want to build this space where if you and i you and i like 99 percent of the time you're in on unmuted we disagree when it comes to music you know what I mean? Like, it's too long. It's too short. That's too proggy. <laughs> that's too stupid. There's but that's this, that's the space I want to make. That's the kind of, like, you're, we're allowed to just goof off and listen to music and have fun and talk to interesting people, and hopefully someone gets inspired somewhere. But uh, other than that, it's, um, it's highlighting, you know, the, the Middle Eastern scene. It's, it's yeah, if, if, if it filters out, if we offend a couple of people, because uh, we're talking too much, then I don't think that this, this is the right space for them, to be honest. I see. Um, we, we, you touched on something. You touched on something, the Middle Eastern scene. And we've talked about this before. But I think it just seems to be something that we have to mention every time. And uh, maybe the, 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 the creed is the joke that every time you mention it is the joke. But this one is the opposite. It's something that we have to keep mentioning. And... When I talked to you, when I was your guest uh, on the Unmuted show, you said the sentence that I really love. And uh, tide raises all ships. High tide raises all ships. Yeah. High tide raises all ships. So when you are doing something that's with a certain goal to, to connect with more people, to introduce more people to the others, to, to have this sense of community, to, to promote, um, anyone who's doing the same, shouldn't be excluded right should be if you if you follow that logic anyone doing the same should be the first in line to join right to, to be part of it and to join that absolutely community absolutely so 100%. um that's why today i have a competitor with me here so uh, <laughs> i like to talk a bit about this competitor idea the competitor mindset uh yeah. i am taking uh, i'm taking like every person i've uh, interviewed so far uh, i have made them sign a paper that they will never be on your show did they yeah. tell you that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I saw the documents. Yeah, they're uh, they're legally speaking, <laughs> they're null and void now. But uh, but I see what you're doing. I see what you've been doing. Yeah, um, um, even JM is not allowed to play with any band anymore. Just he was once. <laughs> oh, thank God! Holy shit! <laughs> Finally. Yeah, I see. <laughs> Get so, that guy's guitar out of his fucking hands. <laughs> so the point is. I, I like to always go to someone who's doing the same that I'm doing to talk to him and see what, what is his way of doing it and what is his goal and if there's a way we can work together. And um, maybe I haven't mentioned this before, but this is like in a small Lebanese metal scene community thing where uh, we were Lab Metal, we were that website doing the thing we do. And there was another website called Lebanese Metal. So not so far. Huh? I, I, it doesn't matter who, you know, who came first. That for me never matters. Mm -hmm. um, but it was doing the same Lebanese metal and the guy behind it, I hope I'm not wrong with the names and all stuff, uh, was Eliam Sauer, who is a known promoter. He used to, mm -hmm. uh, same, do the interviews, take pictures of the event, talk to the bands and all the stuff. I and, know Eliam. I know Eliam very well. Okay. Uh, maybe you at some point you should have him as a guest. I'm, I will, I plan to do so. <laughs> because I think we, we did. We had Eliam very early on. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll dig to the past and find it. Uh, yeah. we published an interview. I went, contacted him at the time and had an interview. So I made the guest, I made an interview with the guy who's doing the same to talk about what he's doing, how he's doing it and how we're doing the same. Uh, so yeah. this is the, our approach from the start. 
and I'd like to make this a thing, like a, just a clear kind of uh, strategy. So you meet someone doing the same, invite him in. And especially in this area of the world. And I think yeah. if you apply this to anything you do, not just the music, not just the metal scene, anything you do, just don't create a fight with everyone. You just said you write a comment and everybody's going to fight you about it. Um, that That's what you're talking about is literally the motivation behind all the stuff that I did. Going back to like fucking Camelhead podcast yeah. and, and Sick and Raw Records all the way to Unmuted and Zvengali and the way we approach things and the way we approach this inclusive community. Because we've been around the Middle Eastern scene for so fucking long where we've had bands, you know, in Jordan try to talk shit about other bands and people when we first moved to the uae like this band is uh, has a show coming up let's try to get it canceled and all this fucking shit that was going on um that was just super toxic it was just like why we're like two two guys and a dog like the whole scene is four fucking people what are you trying to achieve yeah. um you know the canceling and doing all the stuff to, to 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 the scene people um so that's where that logic comes from. That's where that drive comes from in terms of like just sharing because everyone shares. Like that's why I went on tour with Nerve Cell. You showed that thing. Like that was that wasn't a paid thing. That was me learning mm -hmm. uh, uh, film and, and photography. But it was because I I fucking loved it. I I mm -hmm. loved making content for for metal bands. They had something now that last them. We're watching it ten years later. You yeah. know what I mean? That one thing, I had a shitty-ass camera and a dingy-ass laptop. it still has and, value. It's part of the history. And, yeah, exactly. So yeah. so that's what I always wanted to bring to the table, is just kind of that that's that mentality. And when I was talking to you on, on the show, I you had that same mentality as well. Like, we, you guys want to even do maybe a chapter looking back at all the stuff uh, in, in a decade of time and seeing where everyone's at. And that that drive for me is is unbeatable. And I think whether you're in a band or or like us um, doing doing stuff outside of uh, the band but for the scene, it doesn't make any sense, especially in the Middle Eastern scene, to see each other as competitors, which is fucking crazy. Because one time I posted about you guys, I got a I got some messages saying, you know, Lab Metal is your competitor. You shouldn't uh, you shouldn't be sharing their stuff. And that's when I went on a little rant, I think, <laughs> on, <laughs> on Instagram um, about, about this. But, uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, that, that stuff blows my mind. The, I, the idea that someone can think this is a competition blows my mind. Yeah. So we'll, we'll just try to keep pushing and doing what we do the way we do it. But anytime <laughs> anyone comes new to, the, to this kind of thing and somebody starts streaming, the first thing I'm going to do is try to have them as a guest, talk about their show, what they're doing. And how yeah. they do it their own way and that will for me is a joy to bring more people to do that because i think if we have maybe 20 people doing the same that we're doing that will just you know make a much bigger group much bigger tribe the big metal tribe of the of the middle east and that will connect us more to to the, to the world right so there will if there's 20 people on twitch talking about music and the middle eastern music and the you know the bands of the area and there's this American, this Italian, this European joining in on 20 different channels, then there's more people aware of what's happening, what's the music we're presenting, and what are the bands. And if, even if you think about it from just the very basic spectrum, yeah. even if we're talking about Middle Eastern bands and only Middle Eastern people are checking it out, yeah. we have 20, 20 different avenues of, and 20 different personalities and 20 different options uh for for people to check out so maybe you have more of a a, a spectrum of uh things that people might like mm -hmm. a lot of people don't like my fucking personality they're like this guy's too obnoxious maybe you guys should go yeah. check out lab metal uh yeah. maybe you guys should go should go check out xyz um but also it it ups your game like if you're standing there alone screaming into the void like no one's gonna fucking <laughs> motivate you to do that so that also underlying like that high tide raises all ships when when one person's exploding you're like fuck man let's let's yeah. let's yeah, let's I'm keep bored. it going let's yeah. let's work with them let's mm -hmm. keep going mm -hmm. um i think that's that's the whole point well well on, on that last time you mentioned that uh when i was your guest you mentioned that you learned some stuff from what we do 
and you, yeah. you, you adapted to it. And I, you are now my guest, and I, I have to also tell you, I learned a lot from what you do, and a lot of OBS and how to deal with things in transition. What, was it the floss? Did you learn the floss? Is that <laughs> that's something. I, that's one reason I'm not joining Twitch. <laughs> Was but, uh, it, oh shit, I said the floss and then Julian showed up. God damn it. Right on time. <laughs> but I, I want to thank you for, for the help because you're helping me learn some things on OBS and how to do and things on how to, you know, run things on Discord, on OBS, on Twitch. Uh, it's good to also have people experienced in that stuff and talk to them. And back to Discord, there's a section like for professional streamers or the group of streamers where we can discuss like there's a new stream deck there's a new microphone is that a good thing should i get that thing so it's also nice to have the the the, the community not just of the metalheads which we are definitely part of but also the people who present content and try to make different content and uh, that's also a nice part of of the connection on, on discord uh, for people who haven't yet joined discord i am inviting you to to if you are a metalhead if you like to watch the show and check different interviews on Unmuted, you can always join Unmuted. We'll post the links in the chat, in the comments, and Discord, and uh, Twitch. And it's a very nice community to join. You'll uh, Thank you, man. get to know a lot of people first, musicians, artists. You'll lot get to know a lot of bands uh, from around the world. And you got to watch some very interesting interviews with very, very interesting people. And Adnan, I enjoy what you do. I like the way you do it. And that's why I've been stuck there for five months. Because I'm just awesome, come, man. Keep, keep coming back to that automatically. I, we always say we, we, it's a joke in, on, the, on the live stream. When someone follows, we say, welcome, welcome to the tribe. Mm -hmm. And then when someone subscribes, you say, We're f you're fucked. You're stuck with us now. <laughs> you can't leave. Yeah, you're you're yeah. gone. It's a um, trap. <laughs> but it, it's basically what you're saying. Like... It, the community is that way because of people like you, because of people like, um, you know, uh, Belfagor, Julian, not maybe not Julian, uh, Derpy, everyone. And uh, I just I just want to give one big special shout out to Joy. Joy's in the chat. Joy, I fucking miss you. Please join Discord like Rami's saying. Um, and uh, and uh, yeah, Joy, join Discord. Uh, she's uh, she's been a longtime patron and uh, and, uh, and a massive supporter, uh, but has not joined Twitch or Discord yet. It's fucking crazy. Um, but yeah, like it's people like you, it's people like, uh, Derpy and Julian and, and Belfagor and everyone that's around, um, Carl von Mansfeld is, uh, is he, he joined the tribe in episode two, mm -hmm. you know, right <laughs> he was the there yeah. right from the start. And we had, I told him Twitch. He's like, what the fuck is that? I'm just going to make a Twitch. I don't know what you're talking about. I told him join discord. He's like, you, you fucking, you and your damn planet passport platform things i don't get this um but he's now you know where he built a a, a spotify playlist yeah. uh, for unmuted with with craggers he's sharing his stuff there are people from around the world that know the band mansfeld that are buying merch that have were introduced to mansfeld on discord or, or on through the tribe it's that's the kind of stuff that that you know yeah, it makes so me, uh, I, I got I, to know. Wakes me up with a kick in my step. Is that the <laughs> saying? I don't know if that's the saying. <laughs> on the right side, on the right mood. Um, I got to know Mansfield through through what you do, and I, I I watched the interview and I got to to talk a bit with Carl, the the guy behind the band and part of the band, and I I uh, enjoyed the album. I talked about it. I posted part of it when I talked to GM because GM worked on the production of that album. So a band like Mansfield. Although I am living in Germany and it's a German band, I would have never heard of without this kind of interaction. People, you know, like uh, like they used to say, like, uh, you know, word of mouth. Somebody told me because it's not yeah. about advertising. There's a ton of flooding with advertising. And yeah. it seems that the only way that things are working to uh, get introduced to new stuff, it's still the word of mouth. Like, hey, dude, check this out. Or oh, today we're going to yeah. stream this check this out you know so this still seems to be the most effective way and if you know who's telling you check that band and you know the person and you know his taste in music and you know what's in common between you and that person so he's too much into prog he just suggested the prog band i think i'm gonna like it okay yeah. and he's too much into core metal core and i asked him like give me the best five tracks of metal core and he just said check those i know that these has have to be one of the best five tracks so yeah. that gives me more confidence to put that extra effort, you know, to give it a listen. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and, so, some, some of my favorite moments are like, yeah. 
the other day, even you you were a part of this. Um, mm -hmm. Someone shared a bullet for my Valentine song on on the show. Yeah, and I was like, all right, shit, all right, you guys. Everyone knows bullet for my Valentine. We bully them. Yeah, uh, a lot uh, in the metal scene generally, especially because like they're the emo core, metal core stuff. I played it, and then I saw you, Craggers, Carl. Like, hey, wait a minute, this is actually pretty fucking good. And for me, yeah. I, that just made me really happy. It's like, yes, <laughs> we're 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 changing, we're changing not only people's minds, but we're changing like just this this whole aura <laughs> of things. People like m music. You probably would have never clicked on that link if I sent you bullet for my Valentine. Uh if you sent me yes, but if I saw it on like an ad, a YouTube ad, like check this new track by Bullet, exactly. I would have clicked it. Uh, but actually, it's a good point you mentioned there. Uh, the specific example of Bullet uh, from a Valentine is I didn't like whatever they had at some time, and that was the idea in my mind. Like that's what the band is, and I never revisited what they do, and they've evolved since, and they are now a very different band of what. I remember like whatever that marching scene in the video and the funeral thing. I don't remember much of it, <laughs> but that's what I barely remember. I didn't like it at the time, but now I'm putting, I'm putting words in Carl's mouth. I was like, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> it's see. Facebook official now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's on record. <laughs> so, so I, I got kind of reintroduced to the band and gave it another shot right through that, through that step. Um, I got an idea in my mind because I do get a lot of those during our conversations. Like I see some images in my head. Mm -hmm. uh, um, somehow, somehow, I think some people would agree, especially the people who created the Facebook account to watch us this evening. Facebook is dying in a way or another for a certain generation. There's not many people being so active on Facebook and it doesn't seem to suit like a community thing anymore. It's just like post my breakfast and talk to my cousin. Uh, but it's not the community. It's very specific, thing, right? but yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the issue is I know exactly who you're talking about. <laughs> I, I don't know. I didn't, don't, don't do that. <laughs> I, I saw their breakfast post this morning. <laughs> I didn't see that. So no, not, not that one. But, but I'm you, kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the only breakfast I post is the banana usually. But anyway, <laughs> um, I see that the community aspect of it and this kind of community interaction is moving somewhere else. I see it much working much better on the Discord and throughout the, the also the streams on Twitch. And somehow in my mind is like uh, me and Patrick here, we're on Facebook, we're doing what we do. We have the community, we have the people. And through this interview now, we're connecting to Twitch, right? We're talking about Twitch, how it is, how it runs and about Discord. Uh, it feels biblical, like we're building the, the Noah's Ark. We're putting all the last uh, <laughs> lines <laughs> and we're yeah. waiting for the flood of Facebook and moving to Twitch. So. <laughs> yeah. So, but before, uh, before the whole thing sinks, yeah. Yeah, so, but I'll leave the mosquitoes behind this time. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there is a point where we have to transition to another platform. And I will t say that, and I think also Patrick mentioned it, that we, we are looking into transitioning to Twitch and we would like to also be there. I did some streams already there, like two test streams, just to, you know, get the hang of it, get the feel of how it goes. And eventually we might transition to fully Twitch live. Uh, that would also, you know, be a barrier for, to some people who never joined Twitch. And we'll have to convince them to join Twitch. No. And just out of curiosity, I want to ask everybody that's in the, in the chat right now, um, just by saying yes, Twitch or no Twitch, let us know if you actually have a Twitch account. Mm -hmm. um and uh, and just just by the by uh, a live poll by the people that are here um I i'm, I'm cu out of curiosity if patrick if can there's run someone that still doesn't have it mm -hmm. maybe patrick can run a poll just to say uh, twitch have twitch or don't have twitch and we'll see what could be the answers on that cool um yeah but it's, it's actually an interesting question like to see who here ha is already on twitch we know some people are definitely there because they came from twitch Try to get Joy. <laughs> Joy is the only one that does. I've been begging her to make one. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna keep trying to motivate you to get on board, Joy. <laughs> um, I I have some miscellaneous stuff, some side subjects, but uh, connecting back to making music. So we talked mm -hmm. about Twitch, uh, about the platform, but as a, again, we started with Svengali. We started by listening to track by Svengali. And um, I'm going to play another track you were part of. 
not Svengali, but you were part of as a guest on Voice mm-hmm. um, by Death Drive. It's not mm-hmm. a very fresh new track, but not so old either. And we'll play the track. Is it Psychopathetic? Yep. So we'll go for that track, listen to it. And then from there, we go back talking about making the music, releasing the tracks. Uh, Sounds good. And the music industry. Let's go. Hell yeah. So that was psychopathetic. Um, how did you meet Antonin? How did you end up the voice on this track? Um, he had the project for for quite a while, and uh, he was asking people around the scene. I met him in in Dubai in the Dubai scene. Um, he was uh, he was at shows. You know, we have we hang out with the same people. I've known of Kiotion for a very long time, obviously because I was invested in the like Middle Eastern metal scene, and they were uh, a fairly big name um, growing up. Yeah. And um, and yeah, and he uh, he had the, this idea of uh, of a couple of different songs with uh, with different vocalists on it, and he had the lyrics and everything, and uh, and just told me, listen, here's lyrics and here's music, do what you want with it. And um, and that's kind of what I what I came up with. It was it was something that was completely out of like my comfort zone. That's not my style of music at all. Uh-huh. Um, but it was uh, it was very interesting. And I I recorded it with uh, Serge um, from uh, from Aramaic, who's uh, who's also been in the scene for fucking forever. And uh, he's an audio engineer, also a vocalist himself. So it was a lot of fun to just you know sit around for for a couple of hours experimenting with uh, with vocals. And uh, and it ended up with this, and uh, yeah, it was it was it was a very cool 
collab. It was a very cool experiment. I see. Nice. So you had the freedom to do it a bit like you had some freedom to do it your own way, right? Yeah, I mean, like structure-wise and stuff, wh how I placed the songs, what was the chorus and what wasn't, what repeated yeah. and stuff. But he had the, the main, uh, the, all, the lyrics written, basically. And part of your stream, like as, as now uh, Ihab and Four Derpy Paws has mentioned that it, it seems like you just screamed more than you usually do on the stream. <laughs> yeah, these, <laughs> yeah, Saturdays is scream stream. Yeah. <clears throat> but since I, I was sick, I didn't scream for a while. So and, you uh, put that on hold, but this is also part of the show where you have uh, you play some tracks and you cover yeah. them vocally in your own way, right? Yeah, exactly. So uh, either covers or Svengali songs or, you know, even local bands, we yeah. um, do a bunch of different things. I, I wanted you to, to uh, during our last Twitch stream, I wanted to record you uh, screaming yeah. something and to use it today to, to, man to feature it. But it was also supposed to be the opening for this stream today. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we'll uh, later on we'll add it in the, in the edit yeah so i'll, we'll I'll make out. it yeah, i've been <laughs> i've been having the fucking stupid chest infection that's been uh, been bothering me yeah and yesterday's stream someone redeemed it and i did it and i regret it uh, <laughs> so yeah yeah so. it's been uh, it's been a while i don't know man uh, i have i have an issue with like um stre vocals for me is is a weird instrument because it's it's your body it's you yeah. and when it goes sh to shit it really goes to shit yeah for me personally when it needs rest it needs rest eventually you'll have to exactly take care of it right it's, uh, yeah it's not like this other thing that i never touch over here <laughs> i see so it's, it's interesting to see that you you try to use what your talents right editing singing uh, your interest in the scene and you you try to cover on all bases and on that right we, we just talk about how many things you try to add to what you do so you're singing uh during the lives and you're you're interviewing people you're playing different tracks you have metal nights we suggest the theme we listen to like a uh, new wave of american metal that was like the yesterday's uh, theme and that was interesting yeah. like there are bands i've never heard of and they were like those a bit of commercial bands that i'm supposed to know I had no idea what they are. Uh, maybe because part of the American uh, scene didn't reach us in Lebanon, part of it. Uh, so I knew Korn, of course, but some other bands, like they were for me underground, like too underground for me to know. But in that case, I got to know some bands and I said, whoa, what the hell? I never heard that band. That's nice stuff. And I went back yeah. to Spotify, opened the album today and listened to like an album that, that was released in 2001. And I'm supposed hell to yeah. Know. <laughs> hell yeah so, that's the point yeah I, I i actually like every time i go on those live uh like exchange music exchange we listen to different tracks i love to discover new music and and like this is feeding me you know <laughs> this is bringing yeah, awesome. bringing all that stuff i enjoy doing and some of those bands might end up stuff i i review i interview i write about so i i push it forward you know whatever i discover as i told you when i was your guest whatever i discover i like i enjoy i try to push it forward to make it yeah. that word of mouth, like, hey, check that band. So um, I do have a very important topic, two very important topics. Uh, we talked, we said we're going to talk about the music industry. And um, and the la last few guests I had, uh, for example, our last guest, John Bachos from Aneurysm, we talked about like how are they strategizing to release mm -hmm. their music. And yeah. they had uh, uh, Demon Ruby or Ruby Demon, the mm -hmm. single, and Etheride, another single. And for both singles, they made a video with the full animation. They invested in it to make it like, you know, a produced, well-produced track. And they released a single like most bands. And then after a few months or maybe weeks, they released another single. And we, we, I asked them like, okay, so you did that for the past album. And is this leading to an album now? He said, yeah. well, yes, but not yes. We're going to release a single, then another single, and we'll keep it releasing singles, and then we'll have a compilation. The compilation of singles is the album. Yeah. So it's, yeah. Not, it's not anymore, here you go, 60 minutes, go listen to it. Yeah. There is a change in the industry, and there's more of the demand on visual. Like, let's make a video. So if you don't have a video, uh, it's like missing something. This track is, is empty, it's incomplete. Where's the video for it? How do you as Fengali work with whatever you plan to do next? And how do you strategize to, to release your music and what's coming soon? 
I think in terms of in terms of the entire scene, um, mm -hmm. music industry wise, the 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 two routes still exist, but um, singles is definitely the more uh, kind of logical one for this day and age, just because of the medium that everyone's consuming music on. Um, which is primarily streaming or or streaming video on YouTube, and for us personally, I think like we knew about the video thing from before. So we re did release a full album, Sayonara, but then we released a video for each of those songs one month apart after the album uh, release. Mm -hmm. So uh, so we have a video for uh, I think minus one song. We have a video for all the songs. Uh, on that and we released it as technically single videos if you want yeah. on YouTube to keep kind of refreshing the album so I think going forward it, it does it has to be something along those lines uh, something along the lines of, of singles with visuals and and um, and and some sort of support uh, I personally like the album concept yeah I'm I'm more of a I put an album and go for a drive or put an album on the headphones and and listen to it from front to back but uh but i don't know if that's if that's physically feasible anymore uh for for a lot of different bands and uh i don't know if that's how people consume music these days just like how a live stream used to be something very obscure you know three yeah. or four years ago where it was very specific people would go live like why would you why would you click go live button on on Facebook? no one would do that yeah, even though course. everyone had the option yeah. Um, now it's very much the prime of what everyone does. Um, even some people that shouldn't be going fucking live are going live. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, suggesting like uh, horse medicine and stuff. Yeah, it's just 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 turn off the camera, you guys. But um, but yeah, I think I think that's where it's gonna be for a lot of people. We we did have a lot of discussions with different people about mm -hmm. their input in terms of like you know singles versus albums and stuff. Um, so we are in a, in a transition or an influx point where things are going to change. In the next five years, s many things will change. And we yes. already see that change. And, uh, I, and think, I think not only do we see that change, but I yeah. think even you and I as, as music consumers and as yeah. music, um, uh, uh, you know, I don't know what the word is, like people that share music often, mm -hmm. um, having a CD with a full album it hasn't been in my wheelhouse for a long time. I see CDs behind you, but I don't know yeah. the last time I was like, hey man, check this out. And I handed something over to someone. Yeah, the physical, you know? the physical part. Yeah, yeah I, I buy and the CDs, but I all, I all rip them as WAV files and I have them the quality I want when I want to focus on them. But I end up also on Spotify. Like I don't really need to buy them physically. And on Spotify, yeah. if you are registered, you can listen to the WAV or the mastered version, the, the mastered quality that is accessible, of course, if, if you pay for it, um, the physical becomes less needed. But yeah. uh, I still enjoy having them. I still enjoy the covers. I still enjoy looking through the pages. Uh, maybe that's going to be gone because it costs the band and maybe there's not much return on investment for a band. Uh, so we might lose that. And I think that's also like a motivated a bit the vinyl thing where you have like the big art. I can put it on the wall. And yeah. also you don't every day pull it out, you know, and, uh, and put it on the, on the whatever displayer you have. But it becomes an art collection thing, the vinyl. It, yeah, exactly. But I mean, even like uh, Natalie saying in, in, the, in the chat, I genuinely do that. As, as silly as that sounds, yeah. um, I buy, like especially local bands and, and underground bands, I buy their CDs mm -hmm. just to have that CD collectible to yeah. give them the money back for them printing that CD. Exactly. But then I download it on, on Spotify or something else. And, and probably I, I don't even have a CD player in this room. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah, I don't even yeah, have yeah. Uh, the, my, the, the stupid Mac doesn't even have a CD ROM. So um, it's, it's, it's just kind of this, everything around me is moving to that digital world and yeah. that digital world leans itself more to singles uh, because mm -hmm. because that's the medium that you're listening to. It's it's much more of a skip kind of uh, kind of interaction. I, but I, uh, yeah, yeah it's, it, I don't know. It's it's one of those things that that always boggle my mind. But I also consider like the, the you mentioned it briefly, like driving the car is one setup where you're listening to music, and you yeah. might just pick a CD if you have a CD player and just plug it in, and that's 50 minutes 
your drive will be maybe half an hour forward half an hour back so that you know fits the the, the drive but if yeah. you have singles and you'll have to you know kind of like collect them put them in the folder put them on the sb plug it in or on the phone and plug the phone or bluetooth connected whatever uh, but the thing is you need to put effort to compile yeah. them to build the time you're listening for so yeah. uh, it becomes like an extra effort <laughs> to choose the tracks and which tracks work together which was it's, which is what the band does right as an album yeah <laughs> it's a playlist world now so yeah. instead of the album it's like people follow playlists mm -hmm. Like people go to that like new metal playlist on on Spotify or hottest rock or whatever it's called on Spotify and people listen to that and that becomes the new basically you know uh, metal hammer remember when metal hammer used to stick a CD on the front yeah the that's th that's our that's our new you know demo metal hammer CD and then when you like that band you then follow and and start trying to find more of their music um, which is uh, which is which, it blows my mind that that's the way but I mean. If, if we were to deny it or try to like fight it, I think we would, we we're in a losing battle. We're going yeah, up. I, 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 I'm not going to try to fight it. I'm not going to try to fight it. Uh, that's 100% the right way to do it. You can't fight what naturally works. Okay? Yeah. Because this is like, a, it seems like a natural tendency. Uh, but what I'd like to do is try to at least maintain the, the certain quality I appreciate so that if it becomes a single thing and every band has to have a single out every week let's say because things seem to be somehow accelerating rather than slowing down it seems to me from the way i'm looking i'm re you know following up on bands there are bands that are releasing like a single every two months and yeah. and that's that becomes like the thing every two months there's something new and and when they have a gig now there's no gigs when they have a gig they play the last 10 released tracks that would be it um so it's just gonna change and i accept that and i will i will see how i work how i will make it work for me you know it maybe yeah. doesn't as it is work for me but i'll try to make it work for me i'll try to make my playlists from now on you know to, to choose stuff maybe i talked with john already about the ai so maybe i'll have an ai and tell the ai make me a compilation of 20 new singles <laughs> that are and i told the tinder ai make me a compilation of the 20 new singles also but uh, <laughs> this kind of compilation <laughs> So the AI hot, is singles gonna... your, hot singles in your area has a whole different <laughs> meaning <laughs> exactly so i'm gonna tell the ai to, to manage those those things in, in the, the different ways it does um so <laughs> so hopefully things will become easier in many ways right um we, we talked about um also the ai doing the job of making the music which is a big threat to artists but again Dude, there was the first the time i think mm. i think you shared it the, with me the first time or you posted it on uh, on Discord, uh, where what? AI was uh, made to sound like Nirvana. No, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. It wasn't you. Someone no. posted it on Discord where like they gave AI the Nirvana discography mm -hmm. and said, "Make a song that sounds like this." Yeah, yeah I've and seen it, it sounded like like Cobain, and it, it had the right tones. The lyrics were stupid as shit, <laughs> but. I was like, fucking Terminator's coming for us. You guys <laughs> think we're fucked. But, but yeah, but you should keep in mind that that AI is a baby that you just taught to say how, Papa and Mama. So it can now say Papa and Mama, but in five years, it's going to tell you the whole story. So <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be, listen here, little guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let me show you how to make music. Yeah. You yeah, organic. Well, Eastern AI, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it will have the voice depending on the area, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, yeah. That 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 will involve that will enter the industry. That will enter the industry. I'm not gonna dive into AI uh, much now, unless you like to talk more about it. I'm always open for that. Um, I'm not. I'm not versed enough at all. I'm too stupid yeah. for AI. We only have Freddy Fred on the Discord. That's the only thing I know. <laughs> Yeah, so that's another thing that to mention on the Discord that you have a, a robot, right, that interacts with us and chats yeah. with us and likes to insult us from time to time, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's just these little things. Like I, I always say that the reason we have all these things on the Twitch and on Discord is just yeah, it keeps it keeps the the light mood happening and it keeps everybody kind of engaged and and having fun. It's it's just si silly little things that that make you giggle in the morning. Mm -hmm. Uh. I wake I up every saw... day 
and I post on there and I wait for Freddy to, to, to say, to, to answer me. So it, it becomes a, <laughs> it becomes a thing, right? A daily interaction with the robot. Uh, yeah. You were commenting on the comments. I, no, I, I was just going to say, I saw, I saw Matsum say, I still buy cassettes. If I was he like, can okay, find listen. them. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, he, he, um, he's, uh, he's part of the Virgin Megastore crew. So he, he uh -huh. brings cassettes to the country. That's for sure. Okay. Yeah. Then he has access to anything he wants. I envy you. <laughs> You're such a lucky man, Mutasim. Um, so he, he can get his hands on the archives and the, and the whatever. Okay, good. Yeah, he does. But he does a whole bunch of stuff. You know, there is a cassette movement. There, are, there were bands like two years ago releasing cassettes, like re-releasing cassettes. Yeah, um, yeah. The same kind of emotional connection you have with the vinyl. Uh, there's a generation that has a very interesting emotional connection to the cassettes. I, I always want to share a clip, uh, but if I share it and no one has seen the, the whole episode of it, uh, of Family Guy, you wouldn't mm -hmm. get the concept of it. But um, one day I'll, I'll make an episode or, or a YouTube video about what that is and how it connects to music. There is okay. something, there's a character, I made a mistake there. It's not Family Guy, it's South Park. There's a okay. character in South Park called Member Berries. Have you heard of Member okay. Berries? So member berries are just a type of fruit, berries. And every time you eat one, you remember something you liked in the past. Okay. So you eat one in Star Wars. I like Star Wars. And then you eat another yeah. one. Cassettes. I used to enjoy cassettes. So there's, a, there's something in our nature that always connects us to things we experienced when we were younger. And cassettes is something we grew up using, right? Like you had all the cassettes. So anytime you can buy now a cassette, it's, it, there's an emotional connection to it. And you would uh, put do, it, you, do you remember... Yeah your first cd after cassettes because that was yeah i, have I think a, I, have I think a, that was our generation like cassettes were around yeah but i remember going this is cooler do you remember your first fucking I cd and chat this 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 is a question for the chat as well what was your first cd because yeah, it's please. either embarrassing or amazing <laughs> it's i don't know it's it's somewhere in between the two and you're gonna okay so this is gonna follow me probably it's gonna hunt me my first cd was creed oh god <laughs> Are you serious? I'm serious. <laughs> That's the first one I got to Virgin Mega Store and bought. <laughs> you guys clip. <laughs> <laughs> That's my first CD. Okay, but cassettes? No, I had other stuff in the earlier days. <laughs> no wonder you were asking me why is the Creed stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big fan. I'm a fan. I like Creed. Actually, that's one of the like the bands that I wanted to play. I, I, I used to practice on the guitar to play some of their tracks. Some of them are really easy to play along and, that, and I enjoyed their music. Uh, so I, 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 uh, we make a joke of Creed, but I still think they make good music. They have a big production behind them, but their music is enjoyable. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I confessed now. I hope it's not going to hunt me. <laughs> um, Rami getting timed out for one minute. <laughs> I remember my first cassette, though, it was uh, it was uh, Scorpions, the German rock band Scorpions. That was my first cassette. Uh, so, yeah, I remember those two very, very clearly. And for some reason, like the second cassette I got was Michael Jackson after Scorpions. So but I was, was uh, I was a Michael Jackson guy. Yeah, I was yeah. a Michael Jackson guy. And uh, I think my first CDs, I bought two at the same time. It was Michael Jackson's uh, Scream, the single. Yeah, which had four tracks with two remixes, and Carlos yeah. Santana's "Supernatural." Oh, I have the CDs, Carlos Santana. That, yeah, my, I my think dad those, is those a big my... fan. He actually has a collection, like DVDs and CDs of Carlos Santana of everything, and the Woodstock DVD. Like that was one of the first DVDs I bought. Uh, actually, yeah. I didn't buy it. My dad. Yo, it, it was it was <laughs> VCDs back then. <laughs> it was like <laughs> CD one, two, and three. And then evolved to that. DVD. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> But in Lebanon, the VCD was a, like a, a $1 thing, copy. There was this black market of VCDs. Like, but when the DVDs came in, we, we went to Virgin Megastore and bought the DVDs of, of, of the, you know, the quality was not comparable. You had the 5.1 surround sound DVD, and that was already a, a big step forward with sound. Yeah. Um, that was actually a trend in those days where, where like, a, you know, the subwoofer with the front speakers and the back speakers, that was trendy in the 2001s and twos like everybody bought yeah, those. Yeah. um and I, anything that had an equalizer on the front do you remember yeah. like all the fucking yeah, yeah, the physical uh, one all the stereo all the stereos had like a four six band equalizer yeah, that did yeah. barely nothing but everyone's <laughs> like i'm tweaking the bass bro it's like 
It's yeah. literally doing nothing. They simplified it later to one knob for treble and one knob yeah, for exactly. bass. And that was <laughs> exactly. it. <laughs> yeah, things evolved. Things evolved. Now now you have like the extra DTX, DTS audio effect and Dolby built in and you activate so- whatever. You know, there's a sound yeah, stage yeah. and you have like multiple layers and, and audio enhancement effect. Um, it's funny with technology that things are moving forward to give you the best possible quality. But people end up with the iPhone iPhone stuff, listening to metal music. And, yeah. uh, and they yeah. argue that, no, man, they're good. The sound is good. Check it out. And then you, <laughs> you hand them any other earphones and, ah, oh, I see what you mean. So uh, the technology allows you to get the best audio. But at the same time, you sometimes choose the, the accessible stuff. I'm commenting on that because I want to get to, into iPhone. I posted not long ago. I was trying to stream uh, and discuss, but I left it for now. A subject of the relation between metal music and iPhone. Mm-hmm. It doesn't seem to have a relation if you just, you know, post the title. But I'm going to tell you what do I mean. And I want you to tell me if you would agree on that or where do you think this is going? Okay. We had mobile phones before iPhone. And we had different designs and a lot of diversity in designs. And then came iPhone with this, you know, the best shape of what things should be. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we all like it. The big screen, the touch screen, the touch screen was uh, wow. And now we all follow what the iPhone is doing as a phone, as a product. And we wait for it. And although it's not evolving much anymore, it just improves 10% here, 5% there. Every new iPhone we run to buy it. And we wait for every other release of that thing. Yeah. And nobody ever goes back to iPhone 2, right? Or iPhone 3 and owns it and uses it. That's that's the difference there. But we kind of follow that item, that product. The relation with metal is that metal has been evolving. And it went into a lot of different directions. And a lot of, went into a lot of different things. But every now and then, there is one genre that is leading the pack. Right. Mm-hmm. So when you say new wave of American metal, you automatically go 95 to 2005, 10 years of new wave of American metal, new metal bands and uh, whatever other close to that bands. And that's it. That doesn't mean there was no prog at the time, no jazz, no whatever, funk yeah. metal. There was all of that, but there was a, one thing leading the pack. Yeah. And that's one way to compare where we see uh, today, there's, as I see, there's a bit of a, if you don't have a death metal and a growling vocal, you're not in the lead in the pack. Interesting. And there are elements that most metal tracks today, if you, uh, they want to, you know, hit the mainstream and, oh, be, oh, this band, man, man, did you hear, whatever. They have to have either eight strings, or usually they have to have the eight strings, mm-hmm. and uh, they have to down, down tune, and they have to have the death metal vocals, not always 99%. And mm. it seems like that to me because I was trying to listen to the latest releases and the biggest hits and the most viewed stuff. And most of it of metal seems there. Do you think is that is that the leading iPhone now that's leading the pack? It, I don't think so. First of all, I think it depends on which uh, which circles you're running in, because other people, there are there are groups and masses of people that will tell you death metal and and the eight string and the genty stuff is the underground um yeah whereas like the spirit box uh clean vocal not spirit well spirit box is eight genty stuff but like um the more the more clean ambient kind of metal is mm-hmm. is what's leading now but um it comes in waves i don't know what causes those waves but 100 percent it does come in waves like why would everyone in the bay area sound like that at the same time and create thrash um it was because of the 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 sound that they interpreted the situations that they were in the news mm-hmm. that they were listening to and it just kind of that that's what came out so it does come in waves but i don't know if uh i don't necessarily know if the death metal vocals and the and the gent is is what's hot right now it's it's more apparent mm-hmm. i think it's more there's more people doing it mm-hmm. um but uh, but I don't think that's uh, it's getting more highlight than the other stuff. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you might. I, I never thought about it that way. You might be right. Yeah. I mean, Iron Maiden fucking dropped an album, and the 
the metal world went, hey. Do you know what I mean? Like, everyone's like, cool, Iron Maiden. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. But, it, it didn't, it didn't go <laughs> but then when Exodus dropped an album, yeah. in my circles, yeah. they lost their fucking minds. Uh-huh. So it, um, it is still like a, a preference. There's a group of people that would prefer that. And when that drops, is that that's the thing. And the people who are big fans of Iron Maiden, when Iron Maiden drops their album, like, wow, this is still happening. This is big, right? I'm pretty sure, yeah. There's some people that are still listening to that album yeah. back I got to some back messages. going. I got messages from people like, hey, the new Iron Maiden dropped. Check the track. This is the video. Look at that. And they sent me links. And, and wow, this is amazing. And, uh, and at the same time, I heard some other people say, ah, oh, boring, Iron Maiden. Oh, this the album. That was me. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> that was me saying. <laughs> okay, I see. <laughs> yeah, um, but but like, it, it, I think it depends on the circles you're in. I think it depends yeah, on the circles yeah. you're in. And so, um, in, in every circle, that there is a band or two that could be leading the pack in that circle. I I think so. I I think like de depending on on the geographical location as well because yeah. the, there's certain like flagship bands, flagship sounds, uh, Swedish fucking death metal, mm -hmm. uh, Florida death metal, uh, Norwegian black metal. Like there there are certain flagship, you know, uh, ge geographical based sounds mm -hmm. uh, that uh, that inspire a scene. But I don't think um, in terms of like waves. I, I yeah. think looking back at things like the new wave of American metal is easier to look back at it yeah. and document it as, oh, there was a time where these guys mixed, you know, New York hardcore with, with Swedish, yeah. like, guitar playing death metal mixed with a little bit of Iron Maiden. So they had the, the chugs, they had the, the single notes, and they had the growls, um, and that became the new wave of American heavy metal. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the time, they were just doing what they fucking listened to. They... They had all these three sources and they, they, they spat it out. I see. There's a comment from GM and maybe, I don't know, I, I think he has the right to, to defend uh, and uh, to inform me. Maybe I am, um, you know, not well informed uh, on the uh, AirPods. So GM says, actually, the AirPods Pro, huh? be careful, this is a Pro one, uh, Pro Plus extra wide, have <laughs> been used to mix some of the most recent metal releases, which is interesting to hear that... Uh, People are using those to run them to, you know, to do the mixing. I'm not sure what kind of things they're, you know, connected to. I don't think it's the iPhone itself, right? You know, they can be paired with something else because I'm not sure the, the iPhone is good to, to pair with. Uh, anyway, I don't know the technicalities, but that's something for me to look into. I need to learn more about it. He said architects and Zion and etc. There are other um, that they use those to mix their albums and to release and the quality is ridiculously good. So I, I guess, agree. Uh, I, I okay, actually yeah. not only not only know about this, but also yeah. know a lot of people that are releasing currently, mm -hmm. and reference iPhone not only iPhone uh, AirPods, but also iPhone. Um, I'm, I'm saying iPhone, but I'm just, I mean smartphone. Yeah. Uh, the actual just internal speaker, uh, because you're mixing for your audience. You're none of the audience that are listening to let's say the new coat of arms or the new when the world burns or the the new blackium mm -hmm. necessarily have the expensive headphones uh that uh you yeah. know so uh, uh, as far as i know because i'm a bit of a techie guy i reviewed some earphones i you know researched that stuff is that you have sometimes limitation on the fidelity of the of the stuff and over the bluetooth signal that's a very big discussion the digital signal you have some limitations to the fidelity and the power you have that tiny battery there um so that's a you know something for me to learn more about uh maybe we'll uh we'll uh, have its own uh, video on youtube to talk about like, yeah thing with that. hell yeah i'd like but to also th think about the end consumer right it yeah. goes back to the platform thing that we we're talking about why mm -hmm. are you on facebook versus twitch why are you yeah. on youtube versus whatever it's the end consumer who's going to listen to the song I is see. it someone that knows about fidelity uh, ampage and, and yeah. wattage in, yeah. inside yeah. a headphone no. or is it some dude with a fucking samsung iphone or or uh, Huawei yeah. and earbuds. 
So it's so, most probably the latter. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I was about to say I'd like to talk to GM about it and maybe even record it on YouTube and you know just to discuss the technicality of recording. Yeah. And GM just yeah, posted that he's be he'll be happy to privately talk about it. I'm not sure if he. Uh, yeah, I didn't get the chance to say publicly, so he suggested privately. But GM, if you're open to also do publicly and record it on the YouTube, just to talk about like you know the. the how is it to do that and which bands did it and that it works or how good it works uh, listen jam's always ready for the public don't <laughs> he doesn't need an invite he's always he's the, he yeah. shows too much to the public is okay. what okay. happens <laughs> so, so he, <laughs> that will come natural to him so. <laughs> yeah. but i know that he has on his channel like some talk about mixing recording and some hardware yeah you know, sections. It, it, listen he's one of my favorite uh, if, i mean fuck jam uh, in the chat yeah. his, uh, all that stuff that we usually do but um not only is he one of my favorite musicians of all time but he's yeah. also one of my favorite obsessive people when it comes to to audio quality and and engineering in general um he he not only put the time in yeah. uh, to learn how to do this stuff because we wanted svengali to sound a certain way but uh he he basically crafted his own version of of mixing mm -hmm. like the when when he sits and talks about mixing which i i hope you guys do dive deep into like a tech talk with him because he runs grand room studios and stuff but um it's his own way of 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 approaching the mix uh so uh, so yeah and i know that he used you know different headphones cars uh, different earphones as reference for for the zvengali mixes to get it kind of a broad spectrum sounding good everywhere uh thing so it's uh but also yeah fuck jam i hate him <laughs> so uh, yeah that the, the, there's the technical aspect of it but uh, i am i am someone who is, in, is curious about all aspects of of making the music and i'd like to go into the hardware but i also like to go about sounds the instruments and the the musician himself and his creativity and all that and uh we talked about tastes music you know <laughs> taste in music and I, I have a question about that um i do have a lot like i always do but i promised myself that i will not cross two hours and a half i'm trying my best okay so before i <laughs> drift to the end of our discussion which i really enjoyed i i, I enjoyed this conversation i really enjoyed this hell yeah man it's been a lot of fun i want to ask you before i jump to my final question uh do you have something you wanted to talk about something that after all those interviews after talking to a lot of people going live 1000 times is there something that bugs you like that's that thing i never got the chance to talk about it or something new yeah. No. Uh, so, yeah. Some some looking back at interviews and thinking, oh fuck, I wish I asked something that never yeah. that hasn't happened yet. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, that ha hasn't happened yet. But since uh, since I'm talking to you uh, and the the time you were on our show, you did uh, a lot less uh, of these interviews. You, I think you only had like three or four done at that point in time. Yeah, yeah, I think um, four or five maybe. Yeah. So I want to ask you, thirteen, uh, fourteen now into mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. uh how how are you vibing with it how are you more comfortable with it and one big question yeah. that uh, that i've learned is have you learned more about how to um engage with people or has it just been a strict kind of more technical uh question answer thing for you yeah so 100 percent, i learned a lot and definitely changed the way i do it and I, I, I used to, I approached it at the beginning, like I want to know something. I asked the person, he tells me the very, yeah. very fundamental. And uh, <laughs> what I learned and what I discovered that I enjoy, I, I am a person who is shy, but if I go into a conversation about something I'm interested in, I will not stop talking and asking and maybe uh, interfering and going too much into maybe personal stuff. And I will not be that shy guy anymore, just going into it. And that's one part that I noticed that I enjoy talking, having those conversations. And I enjoy this, this interaction. Like uh, so the guest throws a question at me. I answer it. I, I describe a situation and then he describes his point of view. This, this give and take is something I know I enjoy. But now that I'm doing it and those extended sessions, and you would have noticed, everyone has noticed, that I did it for one hour first time, then two hours the next time, then three hours, and then we reach four hours. 
I'm the very infamous Walid, 17 exactly. hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, he has seven hours. So yeah. the point is that I, I, I personally enjoy it so much that I don't want to put a limit on it. And I tell the guest, like, I have no limit. Let's talk. And I enjoy it. And the thing with that, that I also discovered after my conversations, is if you don't put any pressure on the guest, you don't tell him like, oh, we have to move to this subject. Oh, oh, let me continue on that. And you stop, you know, keep jumping and jumping. If you never give him that comfort, that full relaxed storytelling, there are many things that he will never say. And he, there are subjects that he will never go into. And the, the advantage is that you get that extra stuff. The disadvantage is you're extending your talk too long. And when we do that, we thought we could take uh, sections of it and uh, mm -hmm. clips of it. At least like what I think was for me like most interesting, you know, part of that talk, make it at least 20 minutes max and post it to at least get that part through. And that for me is the part I, I was able to dig out. So, yeah. uh, so I'll take those dig out parts and put them as the clip. Uh, and at the same time, there's the full clip whenever you want to go back to it. And when I'm uh, interviewing, I don't know if you do that. When I'm interviewing, I'm listening and interacting and focusing and, you know, have, doing all that. I always go back and listen to the entire interview. And for me, it's like, oh, I'm enjoying this. So that, that says to me, oh, I'm enjoying this. I'm going to do more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's fucking cool. Yeah. I've... Um... <clears throat> I actually don't listen to the to the to the podcast back yeah. again. I'm uh, way too anxiety ridden and have way too much yeah. uh, self confident lacking uh, controls to to listen to my voice talk. Editing myself is already bad enough. So <laughs> so, um, so yeah. But uh, listening, I haven't I haven't been doing that. But what I do have is um, is a close circle of really um, trusted people. Mm -hmm. Uh, Derpy and Julian are, are being team unmuted, but Lingo213, a lot of the people from the tribe, my wife, all the all the people that are around me uh, yeah. that give me constructive feedback. Yeah. Um, they, they don't just go, good job. You know, like the the, the good set bros. You know, the yeah. guy that when yeah. you walk off stage, they're like, good set, bro. Yeah, yeah. He didn't even fucking hear a single song. <laughs> and um, you automatically assume the guy who tells you good set, bro, that he's not telling you anything that is helpful. And, and uh, for, for the most part, the good yeah. set bros uh, yeah. are are the guys that that didn't necessarily hit. But the people that come up and talk about it or yeah. like say, oh, dude, when you, yeah. you know, yeah. this third song, yeah. th that kind of interaction is a bit different. Like people have uh, have messaged me saying, oh, you know, that fucking interview with Peter, when you guys started talking about, you know, what he should do and he said lawyer fuck what does that even mean like that listen to it but a lot of people also message going good job you got a big guest on your show <laughs> they probably have, yeah. didn't even click play on the but, fucking but playlist you know to. what i mean but at the same time they didn't have to message you and say you had a good I guest it's still a nice thing i would say 100 yeah. 100 i'm just talking about constructive, yeah, constructive criticism i i get a lot of that from at least patrick so he's the guy watching us every time and and, and i get some live comments like you know some hardware issues some audio issues uh and patrick helps me a lot to improve and we're working together like you know uh he does some other parts and having kind of a team as you said you have julian you have uh four derpy paws and communicating as a team just you know improves everything uh it's good to have that and we do have in the comments a lot of sometimes feedbacks, opinions. We have some friends that watch us and go and say, why don't you add this? Why don't you do that? You know, suggestions. And that's always great. And I ask even during the live, like if you have suggestions for us, if you have a comment or opinion, write it down. It's not a secret. Like if you're doing something wrong, let us know. Um, yeah. I, I am open for any kind of uh, feedback. Um, it also goes back to the community thing we were talking about at the end of yeah. the day. This is is building stuff like, you know, everybody that's in the chat, everybody that's listening to this after the fact, everybody that, that cares about either what we're talking about or the yeah. scene or wants to support you, wants to support me. Mm -hmm. If if we're doing something wrong, mm -hmm. tell us so we can fix it for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. This is what we're doing it for. From, from my side, I, I will mention something. Um, I... I I think this is known already. Nobody usually likes his own voice. You're a singer that's maybe exceptional. I don't know. But someone who's talking too much usually doesn't I, like his I, own I voice. I like my voice when I scream, when I start talking or that's singing. What I wanted that's what <laughs> <laughs> The other way. Okay, yes, that's the question. Like, which one is the, the one you fear, right? Is it the yeah, singing yeah, or can, the... No, 
I could listen to Zvengali. I don't fucking care. I <laughs> okay. could listen to Zvengali. I could play Zvengali. I'm proud yeah. of it. As soon as you play a clip of me talking, I'm like, God damn it, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a, this is a thing, not just me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so um, yeah, so that's it. Just listen. I listen. I try to learn, and I like to to discuss it with people who do the same. And I am learning from from a lot of people I watch doing what they do. Um, there was something I noticed. Uh, I will I will close with that one and then finish with the last question. I noticed that it seems it seems there is a, a character for the Twitch. There is a way of speaking to the Twitch on the Twitch. So um, so uh, um, I would say um, you know um, uh, the, the, that kind of pausing and uh, and uh, you know the the talking on the Twitch is where you have to um, a pause and you guys and you slow down and so it, it becomes kind of a. A stylistic thing when you're on Twitch, there's the stylistic way of of being on Twitch, right? Uh, I don't know. I don't know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> to be honest with you, I yeah. um, listen, listen, you guys. Exactly. I don't know. <laughs> no, that's just me. That's just me being that's goofy. I th yeah. there's a character in my head. Yeah. That's obnoxious. It's it's it only comes out when like I'm trying to be as obnoxious as possible, and someone says like I fucked something up, uh, or you're muted, or whatever it is. And uh, and uh, uh, listen, guys, listen. It's not about it's not about me muting myself. It's about how muted I muted myself. And you have to say something as stupid as that. And yeah. it's just it's just something that I've been doing because um, back in the day we used to make uh, YouTube videos called mm -hmm. That Guy in Head, and uh, That Guy in Head was mm -hmm. was a YouTube channel where we just did skits, like really really stupid skits. They're all in private now, thank God. But um, <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll share some on the Discord later. Uh, we had uh, th these characters, that guy uh, being Bragner, who was uh, who's always in the chat. I've known him for 20 fucking years and and myself. And uh, one of my character was this obnoxious idiot that kind of talked like that all the time and uh, and would say stupid shit. So whenever something happens, I I bring that inner idiot out. So, Not intentionally. I just am yeah. an idiot. It just comes out. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of a persona you play, but it, it, it makes it fun, right? It makes it fun. I mean, I'm like that in real life. It just yeah. it just comes out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm Derpy trying. can tell you. Derpy, yeah. Derpy and Julian have been on enough calls with me to, to tell you that this is, not, this is not a persona. This is not something that I could turn off. It just happens. <laughs> I was trying to find quickly. There was a GIF of it just to pause it, but I, I'm not gonna. I didn't find it, so I'm, I'm gonna skip on that. But uh, right. yeah, it's a signature character with the with the shirt, right? What, what was it? The shirt thing. Uh, it was. Uh, it said Hel <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So um, it's it's nice when you are yourself and you can be yourself, and people get to know who you are and how you do it. And you did say that if they like who you are, they'll come back and watch it. And if they don't like your character and who you are, doesn't mean anything's wrong with it. They just don't like it. There will be somebody else streaming, doing something similar about, you know, the scene from the scene, maybe from the or, same tribe. Or, or like some of the tribe, they don't yeah. like it, but they still come back. <laughs> yeah, they're hooked, right? So. <laughs> God damn it, Adnan, shut up. It's like, yeah, yeah, I, I know I need, I need to be yelled at sometimes. So th this is the closing section. This is the closing section. Um, I'm gonna do it the way you do, but under equipped, uh, under prepared, and uh -oh. uh, I, I don't have any real setup to do that, so I'm gonna do it uh, cl close, close to uh, the way you do it. And this is by uh, coming close to the camera, right? Okay, all right, there so, we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, uh, listen, uh, Adnan, yeah, I'm um, I want you to imagine that the world is ending in a few days, yeah, and uh, oh. and uh. Uh, you lost your oh, camera. Back. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Coming, I'm okay. back. And uh, <laughs> you have to uh, choose uh, one album. Mm -hmm. That's the last album you can take with you. And okay. you, to listen for it for the next two weeks, uh, non-stop. Which album would that be? That's kind of... Uh, Deftones White Pony. Deftones? Deftones White Pony. Okay, so th that for you is an album you are ready to listen to non-stop for two weeks. Yeah, yeah, wow. that's a good one. That's a 
it's dynamic enough. It's got both sides of the coin. Yeah. Um, it doesn't get boring. Yeah, that's. It that's... does get boring a little bit, but then that that becomes an activity. Okay. You can you can use it to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so this is an album you live for, you live with, and so <laughs> yeah, I have it tattooed on me, so I can't I can't okay. quit now. So you loved <laughs> you loved it that much. I see. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, I don't have uh, any more questions for today. We are uh, very close to our uh, today's boundary conditions, to our Ooh. limit. <laughs> On time. I'll leave it for you, Adnan, to uh, close this with whatever you'd like to say to the people watching or who will be watching the YouTube version of this that will be uploaded soon. What you'd like to tell the people who are in Facebook, Twitch, and confused where to go, where to be, and what would you tell them to do and to get more into metal and what metal is about? I'll leave it to you. To um, it doesn't matter what fucking platform you're on. It doesn't matter uh, what uh, what hand, handle you're using or, or how you're consuming <coughs> the different content. <coughs> Excuse me. Zoom um, <coughs> Just uh, I got I got choked up in different ways. <clears throat> um, yeah, I think just uh, just support your local man. Mm -hmm. Support your local anything. <coughs> I don't know why I'm coughing. I feel like I, I might be dying. So support that's, me as well. <laughs> that's the mosquito I brought on the boat. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's the one I just swallowed it whole. Okay, <laughs> Adnan. One second. We lost you. Yeah. One second, you guys. One second. <laughs> there we go. Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, yeah, support, support your local um, music. Support your local shops, your local artists. And uh, if uh, if someone's going out of their fucking way to do something like labmetal.com. Um, <clears throat> You know, hitting a share or a like or leaving a comment on on a YouTube video or on a Facebook page or sharing it on your wall. <clears throat> I haven't said sharing it on your wall for a long time. Um, for you might be just a thirty second inconvenience if if yeah. that. But for for platforms and for people like Rami and and Patrick and everyone that's that's doing it for for myself and Derpy and Julian and everyone that that streams and and tries to benefit the scene in, in different ways yeah it's actually a huge fucking deal it's uh it's a you know that like you know smash that like button leave a comment uh hit the share button it might be a cliche but it's a cliche for a reason it actually does make a difference mm -hmm. so uh, if i was to leave you guys with anything um do uh do a little bit of that do a little bit of that go out check out who your local bands are if if you like any of them Buy their album on Bandcamp if you can. If you can't afford it, share their content. If you can't share their content, send them a message. Tell them you like it. Like, there's so many different ways to to better the scene and benefit the 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 people that are building this weird art form that we like. So, uh, is McDonald's local? No, you can't fund McDonald's. <laughs> um, there's so many different ways you can you can support your local scene. So. Um, so do that. Just go fucking support your local scene. Okay. And with that, we're going to be ending today's talk. Thank you very much, Adnan. I Dude, really thank you. enjoyed this. And there was a lot of things I wanted to clarify for people who are not sure what's happening in other you know, areas of the world and other platforms of the world. Um, I really hope I'll get the chance. We'll talk more again on another uh, episode. Maybe it's going to be on Twitch. We'll see. And uh, uh, I will definitely be joining and attending all the other stuff you're doing. I really enjoy it. I'm hooked. I will extend my subscription. Uh, and uh, oh hell yeah, thank you, man. Um, I, I I advise and tell any metalhead who really wants to get to know other metalheads to interact with them. Uh, the the behind the scenes, the Discord rooms are a very nice place to interact, and the live are a very fun place to be. And you'll get to know a lot of bands. And you've got to hear Adnan. 
talking. Hell yeah. Jimmy. Yeah, I talk a lot. <laughs> so you get to hear a lot of me. <laughs> but yeah, it's a fun show. Adnan, again, thank you very much. Thank you uh, Dude, thank for you, all watch this live. And we'll see you again, hopefully, soon. So this is Absolutely. the end. Bye-bye. Peace. Ciao.